Um, my name is Achabuli Lentia. I will be presiding over the first part of this meeting. Uh, let me put on the agenda. Good morning, all. Morning. Morning, morning. Okay. Um, as I said, my name is Acha William Tia, the committee secretary for the Portfolio Committee on Sport, Arts and Culture. I uh, will pre be presiding over the first uh, part of the um, agenda, which is to elect the chairperson due to the unavailability of the chairperson of the uh, Portfolio Committee today. Um, I will be doing this um, as per Rule 158, Sub Rule 1A of the National Assembly, which is a committee must elect one of its members for the chairperson of the committee. Um, I'd like to open the floor for any communications. Uh, I see hands uh, from Tatu Zondi and um, Tatu Mabul. Uh, Mr. Zondi, Mr. Mabul. Zondi can go first, just try the chairperson, acting chairperson. Thank you very okay. much. Uh, Acting Chair, uh, I propose the name of Honorable Adams. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zondi. Mama uh, Bulos again. Okay, Mama Bulos. Thank you, Mr. Mama Bulos. Any other nominations? Okay, in the absence of any other nominations, Mama Adams, do you accept I, the nomination? I put up my hand. Uh, oh, sorry, ma'am. I put up my hand. I'm very sorry. I cannot see. I'm very sorry, ma'am. I'm Is proposing Honorable Mshonga. Mr. Mshonga. Any second for that for Mr. Mshonga? Uh, is there any other hand up I am not able to see? Okay, there's no second. Um, Mamu Veron, uh, Mamu Adams. Okay. I can't hear you. Uh, do you accept your nomination, ma'am? Yes, Chair, for the session. Thank you. Um, there's no second for Tatum Tatum Shongo. Second for Tatum Shongo. Okay, in the absence of that, then. The committee agrees to adopt, I mean, to nominate Ms. Adams to chair the meeting. Thank you, Chairperson. You may proceed with the meeting. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, please bear with me because my um, network is not that good. So I will get off my camera while I'm speaking. Is it okay with, the, uh, with you, members? Hello, can you hear me? No, Chair, you're a little bit down. Okay, can you yes, hear me Chair, now? We cannot, cannot hear. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, you are fine now. Okay, please bear with me with, my, with the showing of, of the camera because my network is, is very bad. Is it okay with you? We have each other, but can we see just your face a little bit? <laughs> and then we'll switch it off. Do you think you can share the meeting in bed? There is it, uh, Honorable Maslongo. Can you see? Thank you, thank you, Acting Chair. Thank you, thank you very much, Member. Beautiful. Yes, always. Thank you. <laughs> uh, members, uh, greetings to you. Good morning, members on the virtual platform. Uh, colleagues of the Portfolio Committee, Didi Nkize, Didi 
Zomaya, all other officials of the department led by uh, Mr. Makize. And last but not least, our invitees, Ditsong Museum Management. Let me take the opportunity to welcome all of you in this meeting. We are meeting in a Human Rights Month. Human dignity and rights are very important. Human rights include the rights of life and liberty, freedom from slavery and torture, freedom of opinion and expression, the right to work, and education. Everyone is entitled to these rights without discrimination. We therefore must play our role as a department to fulfill the mandate of our programs. Human Rights Day is a national day commemorate nationally on 21st of September, um, sorry, 21st of March to remind us as South Africans about the sacrifices that accompany the struggle of the attained of democracy in South Africa. Hence, we as the committee must take it to heart that our committees through our constituencies are feeling very important, no matter the color of their skin, poor or rich. With these few words, let me all welcome you. I thank you. The next point on the agenda. Can we please have the apologies uh, from the side of, of, of the secretary, Jabu? Can you please give us the apologies, apologies if there is? Yes, Chairperson. I think Chairperson, we have an apology from uh, Mamu Lulani. She is attending a, a family bereavement. We also have an apology from Dr. Madlingwazi, who will not be able to join us today, Chair. We have an apology from the Minister. The, uh, he's, whole, he's chairing a MINMEC meeting, and the DM has also apologized. She will be attending that MINMEC meeting today, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Those are the apologies. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Members, there are the uh, apologies. Can we have a mobile, a mobile for this? Um, apologies by names, Mama Dulani, Member Honorable Madlingozi, Honorable Minister, and, and Honorable Deputy Minister. I thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Honorable Zond, I propose that we we note and accept the, 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 the apologies uh, 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 as, as outlined by the, the meeting. Thanks. Thank you very much, Member Honorable uh, Zondi. Then we can move to the adoption of the agenda. I saw the end of um, Malumane, member Malumane, and Veronica. I move for adoption, Chief. Pardon? I move for adoption, Chief. Thank you, thank you, member Veronica. It's already adopted. Thank you. Uh, you move for adoption. Chair Malumani. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I don't know what's wrong because I've shown my video. I don't know whether you can see me, but I want to second Honorable Veronica. Thank you, Chair. We can see you, Honorable okay. Member. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Members, it seems to me that we are moving really fast today. <laughs> Our next point on the agenda, after the adoption of the agenda, 
Then it's time for overview by the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture on the Strong Museum, Museum of South Africa. Um, Mr. Mkise, will you lead uh, us? Thank you. Can you hear me, Honorables? Yes, we can hear you. Mkise, DG. Thank you very much. Person, yes, yes. I don't see, I don't see DG on the list of participants, and maybe can someone take over? We've been waiting, he's quiet even now. Thank you, Honorable uh, Ms. Longo. Anyone from the department will lead us with the uh, overview presentation? I saw it is uh, um, on the screen. Thank you. Who will lead us? Good. With the presentation? Good morning, um, Honorable Members. Good morning, Chair. Um, this is Busiso Tsanyane from DSEC. Uh, DJ is on the platform. I'm just not sure what is happening with the the connection. It could be a problem with the connection. But nevertheless, um, Chair, if um, you permit that I proceed with the overview, um, I, would, I would do so. You can take the platform. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, once again, good morning. This is the overview presentation for the... Uh, sorry, the Chairperson, Acting Chair. Can we see the face of member or oh, who sees so? Sorry, sorry. There's no surname and it's just a black page. I don't know what is happening. Can you see your picture? Are you at home or what? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in office. I'm not sure. Can you see my... Yes. I can see your, your face. My face. Yes. Yes, yes it's Busiso Tanyane. Um, I'm director entities of a site and interface in the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. Thank you. Um, I will then proceed with the presentation. Uh, this, if we can go to the third slide, slide number three. Uh, which generally talks, um, slide number three, which uh, talks of uh, the mandate of the Museum, Museum, um, responsible for managing, maintaining, developing, and marketing some of the largest and most significant Southern African heritage, heritage assets in the field um, of fauna, paleontology, cultural history, anthropology, archaeology, and military history. The museum was established by the department in 1997, Department of Arts and Culture, and was declared a cultural institution in terms of the Cultural Institutions Act, Act 119 of 1998. It is governed by a council appointed by the Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture, as prescribed um, by the Cultural Institutions Act. And in terms of uh, its performance, if we, go, if we can go to slide number five, this is the, the percentage in terms of the, the three years that we are looking at. Uh, and if we focus on 2020-21, we see that the achievement has been um, uh, uh, significantly good, 72% uh, for the achieved targets. Uh, here we are talking about the predetermined objectives and targets as planned for the consent financial year, which is 2020 and 2021. But I think if we can see 
even in the previous years, uh, the entity has been doing well in terms of achieving its, its target, its plan target. And in terms of financial allocation, uh, on slide seven, the department has made, made an, a baseline allocation to the Zoom Museum. Um, in 2021-22, it was to the amount of 94,660,000. And uh, the previous years has been 91,835,000 in 2019-20. And 2020-21 was 91,666,000. Uh, in terms of composite, in terms of audit outcomes, slide number eight. Um, can you go to slide number eight? Uh, we can see that in 2020-21, the year which uh, the zone is coming to uh, talk on, and also the, the revised APP, um, the zone has received an unqualified uh, with no findings report, which is a clean audit, and they've maintained. Uh, that from the previous financial year. So um, the uh, finances of the institution and the performance uh, in this regard has been um, uh, at an excellent level. In terms of the composition of council, um, if we can go to slide number 10. Uh, can you go to slide number 10? Yes, the Council of the Zong Museum was appointed by the minister, and uh, the term of council currently is from 1 July 2019, and this current council term ends at the, at the end of June, that year, June 2022. The department has already commenced with the process uh, to, to appoint or, or reconstitute the new council for the Zong. And then the following is the list of members um, of council. I'm not going to read them by name. Uh, but safe to say, we can if we can move down to slide um, uh, number. Um, uh, we can go to summary slide number thirteen, where we see that the council, uh, in terms of um, um, spreading, in terms of gender, it's consisting of fifty percent male and fifty percent female. And if we go and 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 um, uh, write down, we can just see that the, those percentages. Uh, as reflected there uh, in the summary. And in terms of oversight activities, uh, this is the report on the number of councils that have been held, um, meetings of um, the number of council members that they have, uh, meetings of council committees, and uh, the attendance rate, and which we can uh, see that it's been consistent in terms of um, the members attending the meetings. Uh, we've not had any complaints in, in that regard. A uh, number of audit uh, committee meetings, management meetings, and staff meetings. So we can say fairly um, the attendance uh, in that regard has been uh, satisfactory. If we can go to the next slide, uh, number 15. And in terms of um, uh, participating in governance structures, um, the, 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 uh, there is a heritage sector forum that the museum is part of, um, which they've attended the meeting that was held uh, during 2021. There's the CO forum uh, that uh, has been attended in 2021 uh, on two occasions. And there's also a chairperson's forum that was attended, uh, which is the meeting between the chairpersons and the minister, uh, which was attended uh, also uh, in 2021. In terms of the composition of the executive, I think uh, we can see there um, there's a CEO, uh, Chief Financial Officer, Director of the Cultural Museum, um, and with their contracts uh, in, in terms of their expiry. Um, if we can move to the next slide. Also, that it still um, reflects uh, the, the, the management of the institution. Uh, their names and their gender, and, and also you then see that uh, since they are managers, those positions would be on a permanent basis. And then for the composition of staff, we can see the staff demographics there, where it's uh, the proportion is 95 uh, females and uh, 82 males, um, and with a total staff complement of 177.
Uh, in terms of the challenges that have been experienced by the Tsong, um, there was a matter of the issue of the Tsuaying uh, meteorite uh, uh, where uh, the council escalated the matter to the minister. Um, it was a matter of service delivery interruption at the Tsuaying meteorite crater. Um, there was a business forum, there's a business forum that had uh, continued to hamper the, the operations of that site. Um, which is one of the satellites uh, site of the, 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 the Tsong Museum. And that was escalated to the Minister for Intervention. There was a meeting which was arranged as back as 28 uh, February 2020. And the follow the decisions were taken to, to actually schedule in Bezo, uh, to try and deal with the issues of, of disturbances. And of course, after that, there was the issue of COVID where those uh, meetings could not um, uh, be held. Um, and those will then be um, uh, resuscitated going forward to ensure that uh, there is intervention there in terms of that disturbance. And I think also Ditsong will be able to talk further on that uh, in terms of um, uh, the, the issues that they are facing and the challenges that they are facing in that regard. The next slide. Um, there was an issue of infrastructure as well in the same place, uh, maintenance where the fence uh, fencing of the agricultural land and unused land. Um, and um, there was a proposal uh, of partnership to be reviewed by the NTT on pursuing the farming activities at Vellum Prince Law um, uh, site. So those are the issues that are being looked at in terms of um, uh, generating revenues for other sites at, that the zone had, has. So, and I think that they would also explain the issue of the sites that they are having and what they are used for, because others, they are not uh, purely museum, but they are uh, sites that could be considered for, for revenue generation. Uh, next slide. In terms of the Semimax uh, site, infrastructure challenges continue to be a main reason. Um, um, so that daily activities cannot be pursued to the maximum. Um, uh, that is evening restaurant supplies, uh, the fencing is non-existent and there is no security at all. The site has almost become like um, a dumping site. So uh, what happened is that uh, the, the, there was a, 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 a visit by the team that is, is working with the Tsong. Uh, in the in the in the department in the unit just to go and and, and do a walkabout in the in these places uh, to see the status thereof the the intervention there is that the second infrastructure unit um, have prioritized the security of the satellite of the zone um, however it has not yet um, uh, uh, translated to the museum as observed over the two days uh, that was in january uh, so those those plans need to be updated so that uh, the issue of security <coughs> is attended to. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there is a pioneer, also pioneer museum uh, in terms of ch challenges there. Uh, what was identified is that there's a loss of main farmers market contract due to SEM challenges. Uh, a supplier who was there uh, originally brought a, a revenue. However, due to the need to rotate suppliers, uh, the new one did not properly um, <clears throat> understand the, the composition of the whole contract. Uh, so there were issues uh, surrounding that, which then led to um, uh, the zone being affected in, term, in terms of uh, uh, gen revenue generation. So these are the issues that need to be attended to, um, and uh, management um, appears to have addressed the SEM challenges. Um, however, uh, it, it was observed during the time that there is still no fresh produce market supplier at a Pioneer Museum. So these are the issues that have been identified, uh, which are challenges um, in the satellite museum. But I must also mention that uh, on the issues of finances, uh, the Tsong has also approached the department um, to, to, to request for financial assistance. This is due to issues of COVID, whereby the museum suffered. Uh, you know, they could not um, generate revenues, as all of us are aware that uh, there were closures of, of museums. 
and it affected a, a number of uh, museums uh, because they had to close and not um, accept visitors. So then that led to the institution having, um, you know, outstanding invoices uh, to pay and also getting into a problem whereby uh, staff was, was negatively affected because um, at some point it became clear that there would be a stage where salaries would not be, be paid. So the Dijon Museum approached the department and together with the National Treasury. And um, um, uh, I'm happy to say that um, uh, in, in the last two days, um, uh, we have managed as a department to get an, a, an approval from the National Treasury to assist the museum uh, with an amount of, uh, of 17 million. And that amount will then um, go to assist the museum in terms of, of honoring its invoices and also dealing with the issue of, of staff salaries. But I must say that it is not the whole amount that the museum requested, uh, but um, uh, under the circumstances, the department could come up um, with this amount, uh, noting that also there are other entities that um, requested funding from the department. So I just thought that maybe I should highlight that there was a matter that came um, uh, in, in the past two days, that decision that um, that money uh, can be made available to, to DITO. So with that, uh, Chair, I would like to thank the members. I'm not sure if my, my DG is now able to, to, to say something before maybe um, I, I, I can close the presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sibu Siso. Um, I noticed the attendance of um, Mr. Mkiza. Mr. Mkiza, if you are on the platform, is there anything that you wanted to add to this presentation? Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson and the Honorable Members. Uh, I must just apologize. Uh, for the delay in um, able to fully connect with the meeting of the portfolio committee, I, I had serious problems with uh, communication. Was I was I was in the meeting, but I could hear nothing or not uh, be able to say anything. So I apologize, honourable chairperson, for that inconvenience uh, to the committee. But for now, I think Esposito has covered uh, everything. Uh, in relation to that its own museum, except that uh, we believe they have been able to really maintain the standard of service and set an example in terms of the audit outcomes as uh, consistently getting the clean audit. And on the issue of the challenges that um, this was raising, just to indicate to the committee, uh, it might be premature because we had not given feedback immediately to the to the Ditong uh, after we met with the chairperson and the CEO and their team, that uh, we then engage with Treasury who have approved and uh, that we provide the uh, relief that they had asked, even if it's not the full amount, but uh, we will then be uh, engaging and transferring that money uh, to them as a matter of agency, a uh, chairperson. Uh, but otherwise, um, we believe that um, they are well positioned to continue um, to run the museum uh, as professionally and as in line with our mandate as possible. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much, um, DG. Uh, members, before we continue, I noticed the attendance of the minister. Um, sorry for that. Uh, Minister, you are very welcome, as to the other members who uh, join us late, but you are, you are welcome in, in, the, in the meeting. If there is anything that you wanted to add or to um, share with us, Minister, you can take the opportunity. I thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, and um, it was just uh, coming to uh, the meet and greet uh, because uh, I did apologize that uh, we are having a min uh, But just to say that uh, uh, this uh, 
uh, entity of ours has uh, gone through uh, fires of time over a period of time, and they have uh, turned the, the corner, as we have seen uh, in terms of uh, uh, how they are performing uh, and so on. The challenges they are faced with are challenges which faced everybody, especially during the COVID-19. Uh, and uh, we, 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 we really are, are happy uh, with the work uh, of uh, both the, the chairperson of the board, uh, and the CEO, uh, Annabelle, who have shown uh, what a turnaround uh, process uh, mean, uh, you know, for, for our entities. So we 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 looking forward uh, to, uh, to be uh, assisting them going forward uh, in instances where they need uh, some um, uh, assistance uh, uh, for the sustainability especially uh, the, the reconstruction and recovery plan which has to you know which they have to be part of uh, as we move forward uh, thank you very much thank you very much um hello who's there honorable uh, i did not want to disturb the minister can you see his face Okay, uh, Minister, there's a request for your face. Seemed to me that uh, Honorable Maslonga did miss you. <laughs> Is the Minister still on the platform? Uh, Honorable Maslonga, I, I can't hear. Or... Come again. <laughs> and I've, I've been trying to show face here. What's what's wrong with this guy? Uh, uh, che, they, can you see my face? Yes, no, Che, yes, you are beautiful as always. No. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and, no. and the t shirt makes you, you, you more beautiful, your t shirt. Make you more beautiful. Thank you, Chair. I wanted Thank to you. see the T-shirt. I'm happy to see the T-shirt. Okay, okay. <laughs> Honorable Maslongo, thank you. Uh, uh, Honorable Minister, if you wanted to leave the platform now, I, we already accepted your apology. So we release you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you. Members, please bear with me before we give over to the entity to present. Before um, Honorable Moslong Moslongo cut off my head, we, we, we slipped the introduction. We know as committee each other, but we are not familiar with the, the entity, the management, who they are on the platform, please let me give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. Thank you. Over to the entity who's leading. Good morning, Honourable Chairperson and Honourable Members. My name is Kara Barapo and I'm the Chairperson of uh, DMSA. I'm joined uh, this morning by uh, the full council as well as the executive management. Uh, Chair, if you will permit me, I will try and uh, introduce the team and as I do that, uh, if they can also show their face. I will first start with the Deputy Chairperson, Dr. Len Corner. Dr. Kona, your mic is off. Good morning, Chair, and good morning to the uh, parliamentary team. I'm delighted to be participating, and thank you for indulging us. Uh, good morning, Chair. Uh, let me see if you can see me. I hope you can see me. Um, I can't see from my side, but thank you so much for the opportunity, Chairperson. 
as well as the Chairperson of Port Portfolio Committee and all members, thank you so much for the opportunity. Just one correction, it's not Tokyo, it's Tyrone Gregory. I see on the on the agenda. I don't want to be confused with Advocate Nov Novondo. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Greg. May we go as a minute? Uh, good morning, committee. By way of introduction, I am Yoga Zimenya. Um, I'm the member of the Dissong Museum Council, and I'm good to be here. Thank you. May Von Masilela. May Masilela, your mic is off. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Chairperson and uh, Honorable Chair and members. Um, my name is Ivan Mashilela, and I'm the member of the Council and the Chairperson of Asia Ranko. I'm happy to be part of this today. Thank you. Dr. Andilian Ledger. So I'm going to move on. Mayor Lianda Mjali. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, my name is Lianda Mashamjali. I am a member of the Ditong um, board or council, and I also serve on um, the uh, core committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, and Dr. Tokyo. Uh, good morning, Chairperson, and uh, good morning, Honorable uh, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee and Honorable Members. I am Advocate Lufuno, Tokyo on the Bondway. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. We are also joined by the Executive Management. I will start with the CEO, Ms. Annabelle Lebete. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, members of the Portfolio Committee. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be present today. Uh, good morning, Chair. Uh, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee and Honorable Members. My name is Kennedy Kaposa. I'm the, the Chief Financial Officer for this song, and thank you for the opportunity to be part of this meeting. Thank you. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, members of the Portfolio Committee. Thank you, Chair. Dr. Nuel Solani. Uh, good morning to both chairs, um, members of the Portfolio Committee, members of Council. Uh, we are happy to be here. Thank you. Chair, and lastly, we are also joined by the Council Secretariat, Mr. Franz Machilo. Dr. Machilo. Good morning, Chair. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, morning, Chair, uh, Portfolio Committee, DSEC, uh, Council, and Executive Management of the ZOO. Thanks to be part of the meeting, Chair. Thanks. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Back to you. That is uh, the Council of the ZOO as well as the Executive Management. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairperson, for the introduction of your team. Um, and now we are going to have the presentation of the Tsong Museum, leading by you, Chairperson. You will lead us um, and your team. Thank you. Uh, good morning once again, uh, Honorable Chair, as well as Honorable Members, DG, as well as colleagues. Uh, I'm hoping that you've already seen me. Uh, I have now switched on my, switched off my, uh, my camera. Yes, Chair, you can continue. 
Okay, thank you very much. Let me first take the opportunity to appreciate the invitation as well as the opportunity that has been afforded to the DMSA to come and table our performance to date. Uh, it has been a while that we've had this conversation with the portfolio committee. So we have prepared a very comprehensive presentation, Chair. We not only focused on the third quarter uh, performance as was requested, but we also thought let's share uh, the current financial status and performance uh, that we are at as, as an organization, as I think as Lucy has touched on some of the challenges that we are currently experiencing. But not only that, we've also tabled some of the corrective or turnaround measures that we've come up with to try and get uh, the DMSA on a, on a firm footing to get out of the current quagmire that we find ourselves in. Uh, without much further ado, Chair, because I noted that we've only been allocated 30 minutes for, for, for our presentation, the CEO as well as the CFO will take us through the presentation that we have prepared uh, for, for uh, the Portfolio Committee. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. They can continue. Thank you so much um, to my chairperson and thank you chairperson of the committee for this opportunity as well. Um, Chair, we had circulated the presentation to, um, to members, so I will try to summarize some of the key points, the salient points in the presentation, but focusing obviously on the, the reason why the portfolio committee invited us today, which is to look at our performance to date, as the chairperson indicated, but also uh, some of the challenges and highlights and lowlights, um, as well as our financial position. We would like to bring the members also up to speed with the turnaround strategy that has been developed by the organization. Um, and this process itself had long begun before COVID, as council had, had deemed it important for, for the organization to look at what I term the next frontier in terms of where the organization needs needs to move to. Um, so that, in summary, members will be the um, extent of our presentation. Moving then on, Chair, um, I, I will not go into detail of the mandate. Suffice to say, some of it has already been touched by the introductory uh, comments made by, by his position on behalf of the DG, but the, there are uh, seven objects of the act that we are eight objects of the act that we are responsible for and custodians for um, and that largely centers around the uh, heritage assets we are custodians of nearly five million heritage objects and part of that responsibility is also to raise funds in order to ensure the sustainability of the organization by way of vision and mission, we seek to be a sustainable museum that is accessible and relevant to all, um, and a set of values that have been engaged thoroughly and um, consulted as well with labor and with staff, just around our responsibility as, a, as an organization to be accountable, to demonstrate ethical behavior, uh, to seek excellence and professionalism, but above all, to work as a team and to demonstrate that we value our staff. Just to um, also reflect on the number of uh, functional museums that the, uh, fall within the portfolio of Dijong Museums of South Africa, there are um, nine in eight in total, National Museum of Military History, National Museum of Cultural History, National Museum of Natural History, and satellite museums, which include Pioneer Museum, Berlin Prince Louis Agricultural Museum, Semi Marx Museum, Kruger Museum, and Tsuying Meteorite Crater. Um, we, we do look at the museums as being uh, distinct in their nature, but also um, there are three main museums, and of those three ma main museums, two of them have got satellite museums. So the, the semi marks Paul Kruger, Pioneer, Valen Prinsloo, fall under the Cultural History Museum, and Tsuying Meteorite Crater, which is a, a, natural, a natural museum, falls under uh, the Natural History Museum. Just a description, Chair, of what each museum um, reflects and represents. But just to highlight that, for example, um, the Tsuai Meteorite Crater is, is a, a crater, a, nat a natural heritage site because of a crater that fell about 220,000 years ago. The crater does measure 1.4 kilometers in diameter and is 200 meters deep. It's one of the best preserved craters in the world. 
and it also has indigenous um, traditional cultural value to it. Um, as members of the community are also um, availed access into the particular into the particular crater. So this is located Pretoria, uh, north around the Sochanguve Winterfeld area. Um, Chair, the committees of the council, um, the council reporting to the minister, um, there are three distinct committees, core functions committee, which is responsible for the core business of the, of the organization, HR Remco, as well as audit risk and, um, and IT. These are the members, I will, I will skip to that because as uh, Mrs. had already speak, spoken to that, we do have an independent uh, member of um, appointed by council to chair the audit committee, um, Ms. Zaini Madal, and her term is also linked to the term of current council. Um, we, the chairperson has introduced the executives. I will, I will not go into that. Suffice to say that these are the three directors of the museum, as well as the CFO are responsible then for largely the operations of the organization, including myself. And that's just to demonstrate the, um, the structure below EXCO as well, and the various units within the organization um, that are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of diesel museums. By way of staff complement chair, bearing in mind that this is for the, the current financial year, our headcount as at December, the 31st of December was 137 permanent uh, staff, including top management um, versus 163 positions that are on the approved organizational structure. Um, we've had to suspend the filling of non-critical positions at the beginning of 21-22, largely in response to our um, financial liquidity challenges that we're experiencing. Um, and of the 137, we do include um, two additional staff members who are contract staff who are, who are working within the ICT department. But we'll speak um, a bit further in the presentation as to some of the other interventions that we instituted in order to address the liquidity challenges. Um, just to reflect on our five-year strategic outcomes for the MTSF period, we have a total of six strategic outcomes. And of those uh, six strategic outcomes, I think for purposes of this conversation in the latter part of the presentation, outcome five has a significant bearing on the, the challenges that we've experienced, particularly from, from quarter two to, to date. But it was also reassuring um, to hear from the DG and Spasisa the, um, the support that the department is extending through to Chiditsong for, for the current year uh, and to assist us to really mitigate against the, the challenges that we have presented to them and to the minister as well through, through the board. As a summary chair of what the five-year strategic overview looks like, obviously the, the sort of the middle section, which is the, the core business of the organization. We are responsible for the acquisition and preservation of heritage assets. Linked to that, um, it, is, it is of no value to just have these assets without ensuring that there is a research component that supports the heritage assets that we have in our custody. And then part of that responsibility is to ensure public access through our public programs um, unit, and that includes the exhibition, the display, and education responsibilities that we have linked to the public, linked to the heritage assets that we have. And in uh, just by way of, of statistics, we have under 5 million objects, as at the last count, we were sitting at about 4.9 million her um, heritage assets. But obviously that is uh, supported or enabled by um, good governance and uh, ICT responsibilities and functions within the organization. And the impact that we seek to achieve is increased awareness, knowledge, and appreciation for the heritage of South Africa through accessible, relevant, and sustainable museums. Chair, um, linked obviously to the, to the MTSF is the um, the imperatives or the priorities of government and as a, an entity of government, we are responsible to supporting the achievement of those particular priorities. 
we have um, identified five of those priorities as being um, critical to the work that DZONE does and by way of demonstrating our contribution to the broader MTSF uh, priorities. We've identified priority one, a capable, ethical and developmental state. Priority two, economic transformation and job creation. Priority three, education, skills and health. Five and six, which is uh, six being the one that the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture is responsible for, social cohesion and safer communities. Um, this, the next three slides just demonstrate, the next two slides just demonstrate how we've um, aligned our outcomes to the shareholder outcomes, just to also again continue in the, the spirit of supporting and being a delivery agent um, for the department. So as I indicated, um, one of the outcomes around a socially cohesive society with a common national identity, our response to that particular outcome is outcome one and two. And so um, integrated and accessible infrastructure and information, we respond to that through outcome three and outcome two. I won't go through each and every one of them, Chair, but just to demonstrate that we have taken on board uh, what the shareholder seeks to achieve, and we've ensured that we align ourselves to the shareholder outcomes as well. Um, and these, these slides coming up, Chair, are a demonstration of what we seek to, to achieve uh, by way of impact over the MTSF period. And um, just to note to members as well that the impact of COVID has not derailed the organization from, from seeking to achieve the outcome that it had set. It has obviously um, delayed the, the response in delivery from a delivery um, perspective, but nonetheless, those, those outcomes that we have set over the MTSF period still remain relevant to us as an organization, particularly because we see ourselves as being a thought leader firstly, um, and we want to achieve that through the research that we conduct and the dissemin uh, dissemination of that research. We partner with higher education institutions to ensure that there is alignment and there's collaboration um, with the work that we have, obviously um, centering our heritage collections as part of that, of that research mandate. But also in the acquisition and preservation of heritage assets, uh, we have a responsibility to make sure that we are preserving those heritage assets and that there is a, a lower impact on the objects that we have by way of impairment over the five-year period. Um, Chair, I will again not go through each and every single one of the of the outcome areas, but to maybe highlight on each slide uh, specific ones for the committee. So uh, if you look at increased visibility, accessibility and awareness of heritage assets, um, outcome indicator 3.3 speaks to increasing uh, public awareness of the natural military and cultural heritage of South Africa, particularly through the exhibitions be they temporary or permanent exhibitions that we do, as well as the outreach programs that, that we do either to schools or to, to communities on request as well, or just as a proactive initiative that we take as, as, as an institution. And um, Chair, I would, for this slide, just like to highlight improved financial sustainability. When we went into the MTSF, we, um, we identified cost to income ratio as being one of the indicators that we would like to, to manage and oversee responsibly, but also increase own revenue generation uh, to total revenue. And over the MTSF period, we had targeted 30% of own revenue generation to total revenue. And that, as I indicated, that target is still um, achievable. We know that we only have uh, the current year and two more years of the MTSF period, but it's important by way of ensuring the financial sustainability of the organization that we, we set these targets. And we'll talk to that when we come to the performance uh, indicators. And then lastly, Chair, um, I think the, um, the outcomes that we've achieved from the um, 1920 and 2021 or, uh, external audits have demonstrated our commitments to ensuring a compliance and responsiveness, but also uh, we've achieved the clean audit outcomes that we had set to achieve and overall organizational performance has, has improved. But it's also important to share that we ensure that from a stakeholder management point, we are 
we are we are touching base with what our stakeholders are saying about the programs, the products, and the services that we offer. So it's important that we have a tool in place, a mechanism in place that is able to to measure stakeholder satisfaction. And we do that regularly through a satisfaction survey when we do have stakeholders coming into our premises. So we measure that and we seek to improve by way of uh, implementing programs that support a better experience for, for, for the public coming into our, our spaces. Um, to, to reflect, Chair, on the five-year performance trends, we, we have maintained uh, sort of within the, the 70, 70 range overall performance, um, and we seek to obviously improve that to, to 100%. Um, I think what the 2021 financial, uh, financial year did demonstrate is that there was a reduction in um, achievable indicators. And in this uh, year as well, when we do talk about what the challenges that we're experiencing and the reason why we uh, requested or council requested amendment to the current APP, uh, we, will, we will speak to those particular reasons as well. But this is just to demonstrate um, performance over the five years. And uh, this also demonstrates um, audit outcome performance over the five year period. Um, and we want to, we want to maintain that um, trajectory that we have set for ourselves, because we clearly have seen that it is possible to manage the organization uh, and to manage the funds that have been allocated to the organization in a prudent, um, ethical, and responsible and responsible manner. Uh, Chair, by way of highlights and to members, um, I think the, the, challenge, the highlights that we've uh, managed to achieve is that we do have uh, an effective governance um, regime in place. We have stable leadership, both at board and at uh, executive and management levels. Our performance has improved significantly over, over the five-year period. Uh, we've received two clean uh, orders consecutively. Uh, our brand has improved by way of visibility. We have been very focused and targeted in ensuring that there is awareness and appreciation of what we can offer and what we do have available through not only the, the collections, but also through the properties and what these properties are able then to achieve. But also to, to indicate that we've consecutively been awarded the best museum um, in Pretoria through the Reader's Choice Awards for 2018, 2019, and 2020. And we, don't, we do not take that recognition lightly because it does mean that um, the public is appreciating the work that we do, and we do have a significant role to play in the broader tourism offering in the heritage sector. And I think in terms of the cultural assets of both the city of Tswane and Johannesburg. Uh, challenges that we are currently experiencing, um, and we will also highlight those in the financial performance report is uh, around the liquidity issues, financial sustainability. We do have an aging building stock and the department has really come on board in supporting us through uh, the allocation for capital expenditure. Um, we are experiencing one or two um, uh, claims that have been lost with the land claims with the Regional Land Claims Commission for property, particularly around uh, semi marks. That is an indication that there might be other claims um, that, that will follow, but we are managing that particular risk, working together with the landowner in, in this particular case, the Department of uh, Rural, De land, Rural Development and Land Reform. Um, they're the property owners, we're the, the end user, but it, it may or may not have a bearing depending on the outcome of that land claim. And we have engaged um, with the, with the cl claimants of the portion of the semi marks property. But internally, we have undertaken our own research to determine how some of the properties that we have were transferred over to Chuditong and obviously by extension to um, National Department as well. Um, there is a, a, a challenge largely with our ability to, to change the face of our permanent exhibitions, bearing in mind members that uh, permanent exhibitions do become the draw card for the public to come into the museums. So the, 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 the rate at which we are able to change the face of our permanent exhibitions is also an area of uh, financial challenge. It, it is um, investment heavy, financially investment heavy. So we are, we are looking at various options through funding and resource mobilizations to be able to do that. 
but also the digitization of heritage assets uh, coming out of the process of Graph 103 uh, and looking largely at where the world is, is moving towards, but our ability to safeguard those um, assets does require a digital interface of sort. We have been fortunate through support from the National Sciences Collection Facility to have the Natural History Museum aspect of the, of the collections digitized. Um, we had started a process as well uh, during 2021 to digitize some of the, of the objects that we have. And what that also enables is we are then able to, to showcase our digitized objects virtually. Um, but that is a project that one of the projects that we've also had to, to defer due to financial challenges and also um, ICT systems and ensuring that these ICT systems are on par with what is happening um, across the world. Bearing in mind that we've, we've, we've set a target of, of being a museum of the future, so that does require ICT-enabled um, interfaces as well and uh, the digitization aspect linked to the national policy that the department has approved for digitization of heritage assets. Uh, some of the low lights that we are currently experiencing uh, is reduced own revenue collection, and this is largely due to COVID, COVID regulations, uh, and the various lockdowns that we've experienced. A negative impact on clean audit and going concern. Because of the liquidity challenges, we do foresee that our um, a clean audit outcome may be affected currently, um, as was also indicated, we, we, and as we reported on one of the questions to Parliament, that we do have uh, debtors that are older than 120 days. So that does impact on, from a compliance point, um, our ability then to maintain that clean audit outcome. Um, and there are other aspects that we will also speak to as, as we progress in the presentation. So um, I think the most other significant low light to indicate is the impact on service delivery, and therefore there has been a revision to the APP, particularly around the, the core business in the short and long term. We do envisage um, our inability to meet some of those um, APP targets purely because we've, we've had to defer programs and projects to manage cash flows um, in the interim. Um, and then the implementation of the turnaround strategy was also um, hampered largely because not only of the liquidity challenges, but also the extended um, period that we were uh, we were operating under, under COVID. We will talk at the latter part of the present presentation on uh, the turnaround strategy and the areas that we've identified to improve our financial sustainability as well. Um, and then moving on to, I think the, uh, the brief for, for DMSA for today's presentation to the committee was to talk to the revisions or the amendments that were made to the APP. When we started the financial year um, as at the uh, January Council meeting in 2021, we had uh, 34 performance indicators that we were seeking to achieve by, by the end of this financial year. 17 of those are in program one, nine of those in program two, which is the core business, and eight of those particular indicators were in program three, which is public engagement. Uh, we've, we've had a revision, revision of those performance indicators, um, and I will speak to those uh, shortly. Um, of the, of the uh, program one, performance indicators, there were 17 if members will recall. Um, we set out to have a, to achieve a public relations value of 5 million. That is linked obviously to uh, brand visibility, brand awareness, and really carving out a, a niche in this really congested market on uh, what is available as a service offering uh, by the museum. We had also sought to, um, I'm looking at the indicator, which is 5.1 increase uh, or achieve brand value of own revenue generated at 13 million. When we went into the new financial year, although this uh, 13 million is what uh, we had budgeted for, but council had also said to, to the team, to the organization, that we need to stretch ourselves and achieve a, 13, a 16 million rand um, stretch target. So all, all, for all intents and purposes, that was the, the target that management had, had accepted from council. And so we went into um, the financial year with that target in mind because we knew that uh, some of the financial sustainability projects would then come on stream. But unfortunately, the, the, the impact of, uh, of COVID required a, a rethink 
and an amendment to those particular targets and indicators as, as well. And then Chair, um, six, this is a continuation of the indicators under program one. Um, so we had sought again to achieve a, a clean audit outcome, maintaining the previous year's um, uh, audit, audit outcome as well, and just particularly on, on the financial statements, and implement a certain number of RCT automation projects that would be implemented. So when we, Chair, this is just a, a repetition of the previous slide, uh, I will not go into that one, but um, when you look at the performance from a financial uh, point of the of each program, program one, uh, we have a staff complement of um, currently of about 30, we, that's the same number in the previous financial year, um, and there has been a fluctuation if members are, are looking at sort of the 17, 18 uh, to current, and part of that change, particularly between 20, apologies, 2019, 20, and 2020-21, is because the, there was an implementation of uh, a new organic or organic, organic structure, organizational structure, and uh, this is what we had termed in the organization as the realignment structure. And in simple terms, it was realigning structure to strategy uh, because council had already. Uh, coming back as far as 2016, said we need to become an agile organization. We need to focus on core business. So part of the new organogram had centered um, support or uh, staffing headcount around the core business, which is program two. But program three and program one then become support services to program two. So there has been fluctuations uh, in numbers. But also important for members to note that that the realignment structure itself also um, sought to correct or to adjust salaries of members of, of staff, where previously there was a, um, a recognition that staff were not properly remunerated. And so the realignment structure did in itself um, implement adjustments to packages. So from November, the 1st of November 2019, when the realignment structure became effective, the full year of implementation was in the subsequent year. But uh, part of the, the, the changes to remuneration packages was linked to the retention strategy that the organization had approved, as well as uh, another strategy called employer of choice strategy. So those strategies sought to ensure that we are retaining the skill sets that we've, um, that we've employed over the years and also supporting the growth uh, of staff members through training and development initiatives and some other initiatives that we then um, implemented as part of retention and employer of choice strategies. So those particular years that I, I'm highlighting were the years in which the, the changes in remuneration then became effective. But noting that we still had a cap that council had said whatever you do, you should not be exceeding a 60% um, cost of uh, compensation against uh, total expenditure. And we've kept within that. So under this is then moving on to program two, members to maybe highlight some of the important projects under program two was the, for example, the digitization project that I, that I mentioned. Um, we initiated a, a phase one of the digitization project We'd gone out to market as well and realized uh, when the responses came back from the market that we were we were not able to, to meet the financial requirements of implementing that digitization project. Uh, one other project was to seriously look at how we can fully optimize the, the heritage objects that we have commercially so that they become uh, they they become a revenue stream for the organization. But also linked to that is the, the research components within program two, um, peer-reviewed articles, lectures, internal research, and the percentage of heritage assets that we, we then bring onto the heritage assets register. Also looking at the uh, performance plan against budget allocation, um, and you will see the, the difference there in members between what was previously um, in 18, 19, 69 staff complement and moved to 78, and then the focus of the implementation of the realignment structure um, increased the headcount within program two, 214. So focusing, bringing back the focus on the reason why we exist as an organization is around um, the mandate, which is core business, and therefore core business has to be resourced 
to ensure uh, capacity and capability of the organization to meet, to meet its mandate. As again, I've indicated, Chair, that the um, implementation of the realignment did fully um, kick in in 2020, uh, 2021 financial year. Um, and linking that as well is that we had a, a grab on a three project allocation from the department, which was um, uh, ensuring that the organization would be compliant with the requirements of the accounting standard. So in there, there was a um, uh, expenditure related to that particular project, uh, which was a, a once-off expenditure, but it enabled the organization as well to, to meet those, those requirements and to, to know the full extent of the heritage assets that we, that we have and to be able to account um, in terms of the standard for those particular heritage assets. Um, and these are moving on to uh, program two, some of the indicators still. Uh, one of the, the other projects that I must indicate to members was uh, we realized as an organization that uh, we needed to demonstrate a response as the minister had called out to the entities to say, how do we as the broader community of DAC, uh, DSEC entities support um, and provide some relief to um, the sector challenges, uh, particularly during COVID. So how do we then work together with the sector, be it uh, broadly as culture and heritage organizations? And we had identified an indicator, which was to, to find ways to engage um, arts organizations, creative entities, SMMEs, working with young people to, to really work with uh, DISON to curate and co-create programs that really utilize the spaces that we have. Because we've realized that uh, as part of our main mandate being about museums, but we can be more than just museums. We can talk to the distinctiveness of the, of the properties that we have. We can actually offer more than just um, the heritage objects. So we sought to bring in uh, cultural organizations, creative organizations to work with the museums in a, in a collaborative fashion to help us also expand expand awareness about what we can do and what we're able to offer. And we've implemented a few programs in that, in that respect. Chair, and then moving on to uh, program three, which is public engagement. Um, same underlying, underlying um, uh, narrative around the implementation of the um, new organizational structure and certain functions had, were then consolidated under public engagement, hence the increase from the budget. Uh, we, we have taken it also upon ourselves to ensure that we are working together with schools, we bring schools in, we're doing outreach programs. Some of the outreach programs that we've done in the past, in this current financial year include going out to malls, for example, you know. So we, we have to bring in a, a non-traditional audience to the museum spaces. And so spaces such as museums, uh, such as malls, offer us the opportunity to be able to engage with the public broadly outside of just the, the, the traditional, the traditional um, markers that we have, which are, which are schools. Um, and then just in summary, Chair, so um, budget and expenditure estimates have ex experienced a steady increase of the past uh, few years and over the MTF period. Um, the increase in the grant has averaged 4% over the past years. Um, the impact of COVID resulted in budget cuts, as members would, would be well aware. 2020-21, we received a budget cut um, in the, to the value of 4.452 million. That includes OPEX, CAPEX, and compensation uh, budget, item, budget line items. And uh, unfortunately, the organization has had to carry um, the OPEX and the COE components of the budget into the new financial year. Um, the budget reduction then became the baseline for the organization for 21-22, um, and we've really had to manage the risk of um, sustainability, uh, liquidity risks, as well as operating within uh, the COVID waves, and that hampered our ability then to implement the project, projects that I've mentioned around um, the turnaround strategy and financial sustainability. So some of those projects have uh, had to be deferred or moved to um, subsequent years in the MTF. Um, we do continue to experience financial constraints um, and underfunding, particularly for utilities. Um, Specifically, did indicate uh, the conversation 
conversations and engagements that we've had with the department and broadly through the Heritage Sector Forum around what the challenges of institutions such as the Zong are experiencing when it comes to um, the utilities that that far outweigh the budget that is allocated to Judizom. Um, we are looking at, at strategies, and we'll talk to those uh, further down in the presentation, of how we manage or better uh, manage that risk of runaway, runaway utilities through um, solar and greening and retrofitting to become more energy efficient as an organization. Um, and this is just an overview of the uh, budget allocation then for the three programs over the, the previous audited years, as well as the current and MTF years. I will, Chair, then speak in summary to the reasons why um, we requested the amendments to the APP. Um, already in July 2019, we realized that we needed to amend certain of those particular projects. Management did do a thorough review, which included uh, looking at the current APP, uh, looking at the procurement plan, we did a review of our suppliers with a view to determining needs and benefits of services provided, as well as implementing cost-cutting measures. But in light of and in light of those uh, liquidity challenges, we then realized that uh, there was a need to um, request an amendment to the APP targets. And of those APP targets, um, the number then reduced from 39 to 34, and these are the five output targets which were removed from, from the APP. And we did receive an uh, indication from, um, from Parliament that that request to the Ministry had been approved. Um, just to then summarise for members the um, quarterly performance, to bring members up to date with the quarterly performance for, for the song in quarter one, we achieved 80%, which was 12 indicators in quarter two, and these are reportable indicators for that quarter. In quarter two, we achieved 67% uh, of the reportable indicators, and in quarter three, we achieved 71% um, of the quarterly reportable indicators. And some of the reasons for non-achievement of those targets um, include the number of physical visitors to the museums was also impacted because of COVID and the restrictions and the limitations to the number of people that were allowed in museums. Um, there, there obviously was also restrictions on international travel um, and there were, there were lower than usual um, numbers of tourists and also an altered school calendar. Uh, the virtual museum project was implemented partially because of the development of a second virtual museum was also suspended. Uh, the number of traveling exhibitions could not be achieved as the owner of one of the uh, exhibitions that we had partnered with was unable to raise sufficient funds to bring that particular exhibition to Juditong. Um, temporary exhibitions could not be achieved as well because of financial uh, challenges that we're experiencing. Um, the projects that we that I mentioned around arts culture and heritage, which uh, is the co-curate and co-create program, we partly achieved, and then we had to put some of it on uh, on abeyance because we were not able to uh, to to fully achieve the target for that particular quarter. Um, and then, as well as the for members to note the rand value of own revenue generated, we were not able to achieve that uh, because of a reduction in activities. Um, uh, the main areas of own revenue generating generation include. Visit to physical visitors to the museums. Um, we have other festivals that we that we implement with partners. We have uh, we sell we sell um, farm farm equipment and farm related activities. So all of that was negatively impacted due to um, um, COVID and and other experiences outside of the control of the organisation. Uh, percentage uh, expenditure on budget of budget and core business was as a result of the entity facing uh, cash flow challenges and having to cut costs on expenditure not yet committed. A large portion of the of the budget was related to was expenditure related to, to core functions, as well as implementation of the annual workplace skills plan. We had this was partially achieved as only one training uh, program was done in Q3 and three were deferred then to uh, to latter years. Um, in 22, 23, we'll be able to implement some of those some of those programs. Um, in summary, chair and members, this is the as at quarter three. This is the state of performance of the organisation. Seventy-two percent of the reportable indicators were achieved, and twenty-eight percent was not achieved. 
I'm going to then uh, stop there for, for now, Chair and members, and allow the CFO then to speak to financial performance, but I will, I will manage the, the presentation for him. CFO? Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Um, Mitebe. Can we proceed now with um, the next person? But please be brief, uh, uh, members, because we are linked to time. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Senator uh, Kaposa here, the CFO. I will continue from where the, the CEO has, uh, has stopped. So I'll deal with the key financial highlights um, in terms of our financial performance and our financial position and cash flows. Uh, this slide uh, is a summary of the interventions uh, that the organization uh, has undertaken in terms of financial sustainability, uh, as indicated uh, by, both by our council chairperson and the CEO that uh, uh, already in 2020, uh, council identified financial sustainability as a key program to turn around uh, the organization uh, in terms of uh, dealing with the revenues and, and the, the liquidity challenges that the strong has been experiencing. So um, in terms of the liquidity challenges that have been highlighted, uh, this slide presents the key root causes uh, that led to the cash flow challenges that we experienced in 2021-22. And uh, as highlighted already, uh, this includes under correction of own revenue, and the figures are summarized there for both 2021-22, uh, budget cuts, which the CEO has highlighted, and also um, underfunded utilities. Uh, there is a grant that we received from the department that uh, deals with the uh, payment of water, electricity, uh, and, and uh, other things that uh, has to do with our properties. So we have attended to these problems and uh, engaged with the department uh, and all the way to National Treasury through the turnaround strategy. And in the past, we've been able to attend to these problems, uh, the liquidity challenges, uh, particularly the water and lights uh, uh, liquidity issues through funding from our surplus cash that we were able to accumulate over the, the, past, uh, the past years. Uh, and this amounted to 42 million, uh, which we were able to fund. But now going forward, uh, those reserves have been depleted and, uh, and, and now we have to uh, address these liquidity ch challenges uh, going forward. If you can move to the next slide. So going into the 2021-22 financial year already, uh, we identified that uh, we, we coming from a back foot of uh, COVID uh, in 2020-21, and we had to implement interventions, uh, which have been summarized in this particular slide, in terms of um, addressing the own revenue, um, because revenue dropped, uh, we had to also cut expenditure and introduce other interventions to deal with the liquidity challenges that we were facing. And these have been summarized on this particular slide that were implemented in 2021-22 going forward. And these have also been factored into the 2022-23 budget, uh, which have been approved by council uh, and going forward as well. Can we move uh, to the next slide? Next slide, please. So uh, the, the, the turnaround strategy that we implemented um, um, I identified uh, cash flow issues, particularly for the month of March, which have been summarized in this particular slide. Uh, and as, as indicated, we made a request to the department for additional funding, uh, amounting to 24 million. And this had to deal with the payment of salaries for March, uh, and also for utility bills and other accruals uh, from service providers. And the summary of these projections, uh, which we were doing, uh, and the focusing that we we're doing, already engaging with the audit committee and council, amounted to 24 million as a deficit. And this is the request that we made to the department. Uh, 
uh, and we're happy today that the department has come forward uh, as approved by National Treasury with the 17 million, which is very good news, uh, which have alleviated um, the challenges that we're anticipating for March a month end in terms of salaries and payment to service providers. So this has come as great good news uh, to us uh, as, as, a, as an entity and also to the department and council uh, in terms of what we were going to experience. Uh, this slide uh, presents the worst case scenarios in case the 24 million that the request that was made was not uh, granted. So we identified um, issues like staff loss of staff morale. And the 24 million which was projected will be carried forward into the other subsequent financial years. Uh, but now that has been reduced uh, because of the 17 million that has been granted. Uh, and that much salaries would have been paid using the first tranche in April, and that will not be the case now because of the 17 million that has been uh, permitted. Payment to service providers um, is also another issue uh, that uh, was going to be a problem. So we've been engaging with staff, uh, service providers, uh, the labor on all these issues uh, to try to address uh, this, this problem collectively. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to say there was understanding from labor and also from our service providers in terms of the challenges that we're experiencing. Uh, please move to the next slide. This is a summary of our financial position. Uh, I'm not going to go through the figures. I will highlight key, key issues in the next slide. And this is a summary of our uh, income and expenditure, uh, which I also only highlight the key issues. Uh, please move to the next slide. Right, and this is a summary of the revenues uh, split between on revenue uh, historically and what has also been projected uh, for 2021-22 year end. The, 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 the grant that we received from the department and uh, the cost of employment or personnel expenditure uh, as highlighted on this particular slide. Next slide, please. So in terms of the key uh, highlights, uh, from the, 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 the financial statement that have been highlighted. Uh, one of the issues we're highlighting is the current ratio, which is, is the, the availability of cash in order to meet our obligations. As you can see from this ratio, uh, we were doing very well because of the surpluses that we had in the, in the previous financial years. And uh, those have been depleted, and this presents a key risk uh, that we are currently managing through the turnaround strategy and the intervention that we have implemented. The other ratio that we are highlighting here is the current ratio um, and also highlighting the, the assets that uh, GMSA is, is holding, particularly the heritage assets, which is the reason why we exist. Uh, and as you can see from this uh, ratio, uh, the majority of the assets that we have is, is the heritage assets, and that requires preservation and protection, uh, which we are currently doing. And the, the projects that uh, have been implemented, including exhibitions and the digitization that the CEO has already talked to, and the security of these heritage assets, uh, which we have invested in, in order to make sure that we preserve and protect these particular assets. Next slide, please. One of the... Uh, key uh, expenditure items, as you can, you can see from this particular slide, is the personnel expenditure or cost of employment as, as indicated here. And uh, as the CEO has indicated, because of the implementation of the organizational structure or the realignment structure, uh, the, this cost went up uh, in 2020-21. And um, uh, we, we, we are working within the 60% that council had set as a target uh, in terms of managing this particular expenditure line item. And we have implemented quite a number of measures in order to reduce personnel expenditure, including the freezing of vacant positions. Uh, we, we removed overtime, except for those revenue generating activities. Uh, we implemented no performance bonuses, um, a strategy uh, in order to 
manage this particular line item and also the liquidity challenges that we have been ex experiencing. Another key uh, expenditure item is the, the security costs uh, because of, we operate from 11 sites or satellites uh, and that requires a beefing up of security. And as you can see from 2020 to 21, the security costs went up uh, because we had to beef up security on, on all these 11 sites. And this is one of the uh, a expenditure item that we are monitoring. And because of the cash flow challenges that we've been experiencing, uh, again, we've taken a strategy to reduce this particular line item uh, because we have implemented CCTV cameras, uh, biometrics, and other security measures. So those are mitigations uh, in order to, uh, to, to reduce this particular line item uh, by re reducing security staff uh, in some of our sites. Uh, I, I, again, in, in line of that, uh, one of the other costs we are managing is, is cleaning costs. Again, because of the 11 sites uh, and beefing up of cleaning, the, the cost went up. Uh, but this, these uh, contracts, both security and cleaning, are coming to an end in, in October this year. And uh, the new contract that, that is going to be entered into will see significant reductions in both uh, cleaning and, and security. Uh, as highlighted before, uh, one of the challenges that we're experiencing is uh, uh, water, electricity, and, and uh, rates. And uh, this... Thank you, CFO. We have to uh, round up now. Honorable Muslongo. Chair, I was raising the, the time allocated for them for us to discuss this. It's so important to have several questions. And I don't want me to, to be saying, no, you have 10 questions to ask. You don't have a second round. Can they please summarize? We've received this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, CFO. As indicated, you have to run round up now. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. If I may, let me, let me um, CFO, round up and summarize moving into the, the turnaround strategy. Um, Chair, just to, for members to note that part of the presentation was on uh, our own <coughs> going concern assessment, and this is um, in reflection of what the current uh, financial challenges are, um, the 24 million that we had projected as a deficit, but also that um, from a compliance point as well, and our ability then to meet our obligations um, probably has been addressed through the allocation that the, that the department has made. So I'm going to move on to maybe just um, an indication of the areas around the turnaround strategy. So having, as, as CFO indicated, we, we had gone into a, a lengthy process of engagement with council, with management, with labor, and, and with staff around the areas that we that could assist the organization to raise own revenue. Um, and the turnaround strategy was already identified uh, in January 2020. Uh, the first part of that strategy is around cost containment. The second part of that strategy relates to, to staff costs. Um, and the third part of that strategy is, uh, is actually getting cash into the organization, which is sorely needed. The financial aspect of the strategy looks at four key areas, um, commercializing our property portfolio, monetizing the heritage assets, modernizing our buildings and exhibitions in order to attract more feet through the door, and also optimizing uh, partnerships to assist us to achieve that. This was a uh, an implementation overview that um, had to be shifted, the, the periods had to be shifted because of the challenges and, and COVID. And um, the, the projected budget that we had sought to achieve over that period then um, is what we, we are reflecting on this slide. I think, Chair, um, lastly, we, we um, had said to the department that in order for us to achieve some of these um, objectives of turnaround, the department does need um, to support us by way of capital investment. And this is an ongoing engagement with, with the department. So we have presented it to them, but we note that we might not be able to achieve, uh, be allocated the, the full, the full um, budgets that we had requested from the department. That is um, in summary, Chair, then thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, let me get the names. Mrs. Lepete and uh, the CFO, Kennedy Kapusa, for the presentations. Members, you have heard the presentations, so it's time now for you 
to raise questions. Can I have hands? Thanks. Honorable Ms. Longo, Honorable uh, Ma Busile Promise, a second. Honorable Sibia, uh, Honorable Dennis, Honorable Veronica, Honorable Zondi, in that order. Thank you. Honorable Ms. Longo. Can you hear me? Honorable Ms. Longo. I can hear you, Chair. I'm not sure, but I can hear you, there's something wrong with your sound. Yeah, may I propose that you move on to the next member so long and we can come back to member so Okay, thank you. The next person, uh, uh, Honorable, is Honorable Malumane. <laughs> Honorable Ms. Longo, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Greetings to colleagues, our staff, and members from the Tsong Museum and from the department. Chair, let me welcome the presentation from the overview from the department and also the presentation from the film. What I would like to speak about is on the issue, whether it's page 41 or slide 41, which speaks about the issues of freezing all vacancies temporarily. My question, it will be that if I can remember last year on the 2020, 2020, 2021 rate of 19.6% or which is 32 out of 163 approved posts, which it was the highest vacancy rate of 23.9% in professional qualified levels. What I want to speak about is that staff morale must surely be affected by the current climate. No performance bonuses, no salary increase, reduced human resource capacity. I just want to find that, that has this vacancy rate increased since the publication of the 2021, 2020-2021 annual report. The other thing is that what is the impact on the entity ability to deliver on its mandate, taking into consideration the high vacancy rate and at the professional qualified level. And that is there any indication on how temporary the intervention of freezing all vacancies is? And the other thing that I want to speak about on the issue is that I just want to find out because on their presentation, it's like 37, they spoke about the issues of the under the non performance, the reason that's the due to COVID 19 regulations, the visiting, the visitors because of the limited number and other stuff contained in the regulation. I just want to find out now because of the relaxation of the we're in level one. Has the number of the visitors increased or what? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Malumane. The next person is Honorable Sibia. Honorable Sibia. 
Okay, thanks, Chairperson. Thanks for all presentation. Um, I think this, uh, some of the questions are covered, uh, especially um, the especially on the issue of vacancies, and as well as uh, visitors uh, in this financial year, whether it is increasing. I think it has been covered. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Sibia. Honorable Joseph, your platform is yours. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I note and appreciate the um, presentations. And I also want to say thank you for that reports. Uh, they are obviously signs of a good sign. Ask, I'm covered by the vacancies, but I just would like to ask um, if all the museums where there's someone have to be in charge. Um, I'm talking about the vacancies issue now. If all the museums have, I'm not sure if it's all curators, but if, if that individual persons who were to hold um, the leadership at that position, uh, at that institution, sorry, if all that positions is filled at the individual um, museums or buildings, wherever they have their function, functionality. Um, I also would like to know um, with, the, with the own revenue, what was the own revenue? Probably have missed that slide. The own revenue in the uh, 20, uh, 2021 financial year, because I would like just to see what was the recovery uh, after COVID has, COVID has started. I also would like to know the museum shops that um, commercialize part. Uh, what is the strategy uh, around that? And, um, and, and and what is the plan um, going forward on that? If that is a, is a proposed source of income, um, a more or bigger income, given the, the challenges that you face. And of course, how it will, uh, how we will, the plan of how we will attract more, more visitors now after COVID. Um, I'm interested to know if that visitors are international visitors or if it is South African citizens, the majority, so that we can also going forward talk about that. How do we market our own history to our own South African the citizens? Chairperson, um, I just want to ask about the 17 million. I heard the, the director, the DG said this was immediate effect, but uh, and it's to cover service providers and staff, if, I, if I'm correct, because I've also heard the first presenter, uh, Ms. Red Led, Tebe said that um, I couldn't make a word the, the money is the, the money also goes to the capital budget or is the 17 million just to cover the uh, operational budget with immediate needs that um, that is there now um, and then to the finance um, uh, person, Mr. Kennedy uh, uh, Caposo, I just would like to know and explain to me how does the 70 million that you you, know, you are getting now, uh, if you have to report at the end of the year, how is that, how is that going to slot in? Because it's a, it's a third um, or third quarter, or in fact, we're in the fourth quarter now. It's a fourth quarter decent to your budget. So how does it reflect you doing the adjustments? And I also would like to know on that uh, 17 million uh, references made by the by by Kennedy that there's actually a the issue of salaries in March. He was talking about 24 million 220. Um, uh, there's a shortfall of five million if I compare the 17 million by the department and the 24 million that Mr. Uh, Kennedy referred to. So I will deal with that. Um, and then I also would like to know the, the alignment of organizational instruction that started in 2019 already. That seems to me is almost a close to 50% deduction in staff, but the cost is still a, a, a major challenge. Uh, one would thought that if there's a structuring that in people combine functions that you up a little bit their salaries or doing more work, but it is still less then two positions together, and that's where the saving comes in. You know, that's I understand it. Um, so I just wanted um, just some explanation on that. Um, but overall, I think the 
the, the management, the leadership, I think um, the, the good progress under the most difficult circumstances that many institutions or entities experienced over the last two years, there is good progress, um, dear person. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Joseph. Uh, members, please, if you finish speaking, can you please lower your hand? Thank you. The next person is um, Honorable Veronica Van Dijk. Thank you, and also thank you for the presentation. Um, my first question is regarding slide 14, the overview from the department. Um, it mentions that um, the council committee meetings more than doubled from 13 to 27, and also the number of the management meetings from 9 to 22. Um, if we can just have the reason for that again, and what is the cost implication? Um, there is also elsewhere, uh, uh, it says that uh, it is agreed that there was will be a reduction in council fees. Uh, is that applicable on this, or uh, can you just clarify that for me? And then slide 21, um, regarding the interventions at uh, the trying uh, material uh, cracker, I just want to know if that uh, the decisions that were taken, if they've been implemented, um, and if not, why? Um, being slide 22 from the department, uh, there's also the villain prince who are the challenges that um, arise there. Um, and I want to know the farming that they proposed there, what type of farming and um, how will that process go if you uh, uh, get in uh, farmers to pursue those activities? Uh, slide 24, um, challenges and interventions. Um, it, uh, um, if the management, uh, like I say, uh, appeared to uh, have addressed the um, um, supply chain management challenges, why um, is there still no uh, fresh produced market supplier at uh, the Pioneer Museum? Um, and then the annual report, um, I want to know why is there, after all this uh, time, there is no risk uh, management plan? Um, which, uh, that is uh, on page 22. Then. Um, um, page 23, with uh, regards to the researchers, how do you attract researchers? I just want to know how you uh, pursue that. And then also, um, I see that um, you mentioned uh, the renovation and maintenance of the, uh, of the buildings. Um, and then um, that you need to, that it, uh, the maintenance support needs to be secured uh, from the custodian of public fixed assets and the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. I want to know how that will be addressed. And um, then on page 49, these amounts um, that are allocated uh, for infrastructure projects, um, I want to know how do you determine those amounts? Do you get quotes? or how um, do you get uh, to, to that um, specific amount? And then I want to know, um, I don't specifically, I didn't see it, if there are numbers of physical visitors to the museums uh, or virtual. I um, just want to double check on the virtual, but the, um, the physical visitors to um, the museums per annum, if you have record of that. Um, maybe I just, need to stop there. I, I actually, at page 23, I saw that the total expenses of the staff, um, all of the staff had double the expenses. If that can also maybe just be clear, clarified. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Honorable Van Dijk. The next Honorable is Honorable Zondi. Thanks, Chair. Uh, good morning to the meeting. Um, I, Chair, I have a few questions uh, and a few comments. The first one, Chair, I wish to comment the, the department and the entity on the financial accountability uh, through the AG. Uh, the unqualified with no findings show that the department is managing, supporting, and guide the entity uh, quite well. We, we commend uh, the department for that. Chair, I so wish the, 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 the entity can note two issues um, uh, which I don't need a, a, a response to one. Uh, the, grant, uh, uh, the entity is grant dependent. Um, when you look at the the, 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 the 
their allocation uh, the, the, and their expenditure uh, is a concern. And the, the second concern is the fluctuation of the performance on a planned uh, target, 61, 74, and, and 72. It does not show the, the improvement the, 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 from 61 upward. That fluctuation is a, is a, is a, is a concern to me. Okay, I have a few questions uh, uh, to the entity. The first one is the turnaround strategy uh, derailed, derailed due to the liquidity, due to the liquidity challenges. Uh, I want to know, Chair, uh, what are those challenges? Just a little bit, um, if, if, they, if, 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 if they, 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 they told us, uh, I, 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 I want them to be more explicit on that. The second one, Chair, is the, how the underfunding of, of utilities result in the decline of the visitors. The next question, Chair, how the opening of the country will assist in the financial sustainability or turnaround strategy implementation? Uh, and the last one, Chair, is the, the stability of the, of the organization, uh, whether the organization is stable uh, and it can discharge its uh, the, uh, own responsibilities without any hassle. The the the, the last comment chair on the on the on, on the attempt and the strategy. Um, I want to end there. The the, the term of the leadership. Uh, they are left with few months. Yet they have a turnaround strategy of five years from last financial year up to 2025. I just wish the leadership can comment on that because maybe uh, there will be a change of hands or a transition needs to be uh, smooth so that the turnaround uh, strategy can work because Maybe the new leadership one um, uh, 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 will have its own uh, 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 strategy or its own plans that has nothing to do with the turnaround strategy in hand. I just wish the the, the leadership can, can comment on that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Zondi. We can give now. The platform to Honorable Muslongo. I hope that your network is much better now. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Am I audible? Yes. You can proceed. Okay, I, think, I think we must blame ESCOM here. So we have a short, uh, uh, I don't know, it's short loading or loading shed or whatever, but you must blame the entities like ESCOM. But nonetheless, okay. Chair, let's go to the presentation. I welcome the presentation. Chair, maybe I'll ask several questions, but with your indulgence, because I did not know exactly what was happening with my gadget. COVID has affected this entity and its uh, satellite museum. I think the minister was supposed to be here, and I think the DG must take the message. It is high time that the NCC must uplift this restriction. It's still affecting these entities even today. The minister must get this and must understand the effect of the COVID regulations. Nonetheless, here the presentation is not clear. We don't have detailed uh, reasons and issues per entity. Are they performing? Per entity, are they underperforming? When I'm saying per entity, per satellite, so to say, because this uh, is an executive uh, presentation. You don't know exactly if you don't understand what are these entities all about. I think in future, we must get each uh, satellite what, what affects its own challenges, its own success, its own per entity or per satellite, so to say, museum. One of the things that I've highlighted before and I'll highlight it even today, you have, you have a, a budget and you have service delivery and both goes together. You cannot have 72 achieved, but budget is 100%. There's a contradiction. I think I must get an explanation. How can we have 
uh, used the budget 100%, but the service delivered 72%. I think I need an explanation on that. Or how can we have that? Uh, I wanted to find out uh, above all with the why do we have, we still have consultation fee and it's high, but we have more staff members in this entity. More, the, I think that this is the highest entity that I've seen uh, having more staff. Why do we still have a consultative fee and why don't we reduce it? Are these specials that we cannot get them permanently? Can I get an, an explanation and the reason why is it so high? Year by year, you can see it's just going high. How much do you owe City of Swane? Did you, did you do any arrangement with the City of Swane because they are cutting you guys? How much are you owing them? And any arrangement has been done? I think there must be intergovernmental relationship issues. If you respond, they won't cut you. But if you don't respond, they'll cut you. Do you get any allocation budget from tourism department? If yes, how much? If no, it's fine. But it is shocking to this presentation, especially on service delivery and the challenge itself. I think we must get an explanation what tempered service delivery in detail, because this is a high executive presentation. I don't get exactly what tempered. Yes, uh, I see Mutre. What is it was this? There's a Sutu name which came in the Mutre something. I forgot that. But nonetheless, can we get an explanation of what was the actual issue? The minister did come in, but there's no solution to date. What is the reason and what were their issues? The status of his friends, I didn't get an explanation to date. What is it all about? And I think as a committee, even the entity must understand. I can see it's 50-50 women, but you must explain what is diversity. Diversity versus view transformation. I don't see any, you know, when you understand diversity, when you understand transformation, it's not one-sided, it's all. It, it encompasses all race, shall background, young, old, but this, I question the, the it's, it's not a, it's not all clean, it's not all well in this entity with diversity and transformation. I think I wanted to put it forward, I can see it's 50-50, but there's no diversity and I question transformation in my understanding. What is the role of independent chairperson? Because on your slide there was this independent chairperson. And can I get an explanation? This for the first time hearing all these entities, first time coming with this independent and a chairperson, but we had independent board. I think maybe we must have independent board when there's entities than one chairperson. Now I must get an explanation. What is this all about? But uh, one of the things that I wanted to find out uh, with, uh, do they have a website? And I think that website, my suggestion is let's, let's have one website that links to different satellites. When you go to Mutwedin, the song song, when you go to the Zoom Museum, you'll go to that uh, website, but it has different entities in, what, in one website. I think, let's be creative. Can I have the website part and then let's see how far is it and then we'll take it from there. Chair, the museum has offered South Africa post-employment benefits, compromising of uh, different benefits, uh, post-medical aid and other benefits, but are they distributing them accordingly? And I think as a committee, I think they've motivated, I've seen that there's a, a budget review which has been passed, I'm happy with that. But I wanted, i go back to the ratio of vacancies. It's 9.6% to 32 vacancies out of 163 approved posts. Which one of the highest vacancy, 23.9 percentage at the professional high level? Now, Chair, they must explain to us exactly with, uh, yes, I see that I'm not gonna It, we, we, we still have, I think, maybe I don't know. Chair, does the interjection? Chair, we lose you for a minute. Thank you, proceed. Okay, I don't know where, okay. I wanted, uh, let, let us, uh, I think, what are the mitigation factor on staff issues? Yes, I, I get it that uh, no benefits, no overtime, I get it. But what are the uh, uh, mitigation uh, scenario that they can give us? How are they going to solve this? Thank you, Chair, for now. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Maslongo. To the CFO and the CEO, questions raised by the members of the committee. I hope that you note all the questions that they raised. And now is the time to answer on that questions. I thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, we have taken note of the members' questions and um, myself and the CFO will work through, through the, the, the members' questions in the order that they were presented. Um, the issue of um, staff morale in relation to, to the, the vacancy rate, um, I, I, must, I must indicate to members that we, we have, a, as an organization, a very healthy, transparent um, communication channel platform with, with staff. Through the regular staff meetings, we have a engagement with, with labor as well on issues that, that do relate to this. Um, some of the, the vacancies have been natural attrition. So some members of staff were at, at retirement age and therefore they, um, it, it was time for them to, um, to, to retire. Um, some of them have been, so for example, um, one or two curator positions, uh, a few curator positions were, were placed on hold as part of, of the freeze. We are fortunate in that um, we've got a team of, currently we've got a team of curators and researchers that are able to then uh, double up in terms of the responsibilities of certain functions. So if I can use an example, the, if you look at the level or the rate at which we have produced peer-reviewed publications from a research point, that, that number year on year has, has improved. And we can also say, I think what, what remote working enabled is that our researchers were able to, to focus on, on, the work at, on the work at hand. Um, so there hasn't been there hasn't been significant impact or material impact when you look at the the vacancies that that are that are available at the professional level and the uh, support from the rest of the team to take on additional additional work. Um, the the freezes have to honourable uh, Malumani's question. The the freezes have just been temporary. We put the freeze in already coming from. The, the COVID year one, 2020-21, uh, because of the reduction in compensation costs or the, yeah, the budget reduction in compensation costs of 1.9 million, 1952 million, we had to freeze certain positions in order to accommodate that reduction. The freezes are, we're not anticipating that they will be long-term. We, we had to, this year, take a decision not to fill um, non-critical positions, if yeah, that's the right word. So we didn't fill non-critical positions because we knew that um, it would not have a bearing one on service delivery and that the, the responsibilities of those particular positions would be well accommodated by members of, of staff. And we've been fortunate in that respect that it hasn't um, impacted our ability from a service delivery point. The number of visitors, there has been a, a slight improvement. So for example, uh, schools are, the main the mainstream of income from visitors does come from from schools so there is a, a slow but sure return to museum so the numbers have slightly improved and by way of um by way of example for for the reporting quarter three we had sixty five thousand um, visitors come through come through the door the annual target for that quarter was the annual target was 200,000. We did bring that number down. So as at uh, the end of quarter three, we were sitting at 65,000 and hopefully that number will also increase um, in, quarter, in quarter four because of the other related activities that, that we also do. Um, moving on to Honorable Joseph's question and between myself and the CFO will respond to that. Do museums have heads of, of museums? So the three satellite museums are headed by executive members. Um, military history, cultural history, natural history museums do have directors of museums. And then the satellites all do have what we call site curators. They are in essence uh, site managers. So all those positions are, are filled. There are, um, for example, 
when we did the realignment process, we clustered certain museums to be uh, overseen by one manager. And the ones that are closest to each other have got one manager. So cultural um, Kruger Museum and Pioneer Museum, which are closer in relation to each other, have got one, one um, side curator. Um, Semi Marx and Willem Prinsloo, which are also geographically closer, have got one side curator. And then we have a side curator responsible for, uh, for Twain because it's the furthest north. There is a, a, a side curator for that, for that, particular, for that particular museum. Um, I wanted to, to maybe show the, go back to the presentation and show the, um, not that one, uh, show the member which, from a revenue genera generation point, which of the, how we've fared over the years. Uh, and this is the slide that I think the member indicated that they might not, uh, he might not have seen uh, correctly. So when you look at this particular slide, I'm going to do presentation mode. Oh, there we go. When you look at this uh, particular slide, so we, we've, we've been fortunate in that over the years, um, we've averaged around 10, 10 million rand. The highest over the period that I'm reflecting was 11 million rand in 1819. Um, 20, 1920 was also uh, good by way of uh, the 10 million mark. And then we had a significant de decrease in 2021 for, for COVID reasons, and we are projecting uh, around 4 million, um, 4 million 300 by the end of, of the financial year. So historically, we can see that we, we, we've done fairly okay-ish, but recognizing that there is more that can still be done to increase our, our revenue generation. Um, okay, so, so also the commercialization aspect of the uh, strategy three of the turnaround strategy says, we've got, we are, we, we're fortunate in that we've got an amazing property portfolio. So of all our sites, there's more that we can do on those sites that we are doing. So for example, at Semimarks, uh, we are doing uh, weddings, we are doing birthday parties, we are doing kiddies related activities. Military history is, is very favored by, by young boys. Uh, and we have a lot of birthday parties hosted there. For Pioneer Museum, through the Arts Culture pro Program and optimizing partnerships, We've entered into a partnership with an organization, a nonprofit organization working in the arts, particularly music, called Concerts SA. They get funding from, from the Norwegian Embassy, which is a live performance support program. So we partnered with them and we hosted one of uh, a few of the, the, the um, concerts at, at Pioneer Museum. Pioneer Museum lends itself very well to those kind of activities and we, we wanted to increase awareness and visibility as to what else can we do over and above just come into a museum and see our objects, come and learn about history. So the, the, the commercialization aspect of the property portfolio specifically is saying, let us do more. So in the turnaround strategy, we've also identified, for example, at Swain, we can do uh, quad biking, we can do camping sites, we wanna do um, improve um, build pools, we've got a pool at, at Bill and Prince Luke. So there's a lot of activities that we've identified as part of the turnaround strategy that will help us really commercialize what we currently have. When we talk about commercializing um, the, the, the heritage objects, so it's simple things like um, selling prints of some of the objects from, uh, from the art galleries. So that will also assist us in, in, generating, in generating income. Um, how do we attract more visitors? It, it really is marketing, 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 um, honorable member. So when I mentioned that we are, we've improved visibility on the brand and things like the Reader's Choice Awards, they give us, they, they let the broader public know that we are, we, we're out there, we're available, there's, there's activities that you can do at Zain. 
we do have partnership. We are a member of the, for example, the Twani Tourism Association. We have partnerships. There's some. There's a website called Pretoria Bucket List. So we list on on various on various websites. We we sell ourselves broadly. So in previous years, we had participated in, uh, for example, the, the Africa in Daba, the tourism in Daba that happens in Durban. So we want to be available in in those particular spaces because there is a, a very distinct correlation between us culture and heritage and the tourism industry. Um, there was a member asked a question about whether we get money from the Department of Tourism. Um, no, we do not. I think it was Honorable Mshongo. We do not get a budget from, from uh, Department of Tourism at any sphere of government. But working with the Twani Tourism Association, the, the partnership is, is very valuable to us because whenever they go sell products and services that are available in the city, we form part of that. So we're always included in the collateral. They, they support all our programs. They, you know, it's an extension of um, marketing that, that really works in, in our favor. Um, let me let me maybe stop there and ask if or to to respond to the questions around um, the financials that uh, Honourable Joseph asked for the 17 million rand in particular. Thank you, uh, CEO. I'll address the questions uh, starting with uh, Honourable Joseph. The 17 million that uh, we've received to address the liquidity challenges. Uh, the question was, uh, what does it cover? You know, uh, what what are we going to use that money for? So uh, we 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 came up with a priority list of the the things that we're going to use that money for. Uh, in summary, uh, we're going to pay the the March uh, salaries for for employees. We are going to pay service providers. They were approvers uh, or for outstanding invoices. Uh, that, that we need to pay. And the last one is uh, DPWI, the utilities for water, electricity, and rights. So, so that, that was part of the uh, list that we also provided to, to DSAC uh, in order to indicate what are we going to use that money for. And obviously, uh, the 17 million came short of the 24 million uh, that we requested. Uh, there's a, a, a difference of 7 million. Uh, that is not covered, and this amount is, is will be attributable to the payment for DPWI for utilities in terms of the priority list uh, that what that we drew up uh, to cover the the 24 million that that we requested. So the question is, uh, this short for seven million, how are we going to address it? Um, uh, so the seven million will be. Um, uh, the deficit that will be attributable to payment for utilities. And like the CEO has indicated, we've engaged with the DPW uh, in terms of uh, uh, the approvals that we need to pay to them to give us a payment holiday. Uh, so obviously this is a, a, a liability that we will have to carry into the next financial year. And uh, uh, the interventions that uh, we have put in place um, in dealing with this particular deficit uh, by engaging with DPW. So you are right, Honorable Member, uh, we, we have to, to go back and, and, and see uh, and engage with DPW uh, for a debt of 7 million that will be paid in the next financial year. Uh, coming to Honorable Van Beek, uh, there's a question about how do we determine the infrastructure amounts or the allocations that will be indicated as the money that we uh, we require for infrastructure allocations. And the response to that is that we have a project manager, which is a, a requirement for infrastructure grants that we get from the department. There's a requirement that we needed to appoint a project manager to assist us with managing all these infrastructure projects. So the project manager has a quantity surveyor that uh, does the costing uh, for all the projects uh, that we've identified, which have been included in those uh, infrastructure allocations. So that is how we uh, we, we determine those uh, infrastructure allocations. Uh, again, working with the department, uh, we have to um, complete a UM, a user asset management plan, and those amounts are also included in that UM uh, that we submit to, to the department.
Then uh, coming to Honorable Zondi, there was a question about uh, the turnaround strategy, uh, what are the challenges uh, that we are addressing in the turnaround strategy, How do, uh, what are those, uh, uh, those challenges? In the presentation that we, we have uh, uh, discussed here, there is a slide that talks to the four, three items, which are the root causes, uh, that has given rise to the liquidity challenges or the cash flow challenges, uh, which we are addressing by way of the turnaround funding strategy. And just to summarize those three, one is the uh, the, the budget cuts that we have uh, experienced uh, in the past years. Number two is the under collection of own revenue, uh, which we have also indicated in the presentation. And number three is the underfunding of uh, utilities. Uh, which we've also highlighted. So those are the root causes uh, which have given rise to the cash flow challenges and the turnaround strategy that we put in place to address those particular uh, challenges. And then there was also a question about uh, the underfunding of the utilities. Does it affect visitors to museums? Uh, so far, not. Uh, but if it comes to the extent where uh, we haven't paid the city of Swane, for example, and they come to cut electricity at one of our sites and we have to close. Yes, that will uh, affect the visitors to the museum. But so far, uh, we have been able to intervene uh, to avoid those uh, cuts. Uh, the electricity cuts to the, some of the satellites by paying any outstanding amounts to the city of Swane. There was a point when they came to one of our museums, which is natural history. They came there to cut electricity, and we negotiated and paid half of the amount uh, so that the other half we can pay uh, in the next month. So we, we get into those negotiations in managing uh, those particular problems. And then coming to Honorable Mchongo, uh, there was a question about consultants. Uh, why is this amount uh, increasing? Uh, and what are those consultants? What are we using consultants for? So, uh, the consultants are for uh, outsourced services, uh, which we cannot do internally. Um, and we, we actually limit uh, the use of consultants to very critical key services that we cannot manage internally. Uh, and we, in terms of uh, the budget that we prepared for uh, 2021, 22, and also 22, 23, we have actually reduced uh, the amount of consultants. Last year it was, actually this current year where we are, it was 1.5. And going into 2022-23, we've reduced it to 1.1. And those services include payroll services. We, we've we outsourced the, the, the use of payroll services. We cannot do it internally. We run a, a hotline, a Bobozella hotline for reporting of fraud uh, and other irregularities. So that is also outsourced. A, to a, a service provider. There's a wellness service for our employees, uh, which is run also by a, a service provider. So those are key critical services that we cannot do internally, and, and we use consultants and we monitor that uh, very carefully. Um, then there was a question about the post-medical aid benefits. Uh, uh, is that being managed properly? So. Just to explain, a post-medical aid benefits is for employees that have retired, and there's a policy, there's an HR policy that deals with that. So we have to pay a medical aid uh, for those uh, employees. The former employees, it's, it's a liability that we've inherited, a legacy problem uh, that, that we are dealing with. Uh, so we pay medical aid on behalf of those employees that retired at a particular point in time. Uh, it's not for the current employees that we are we are we are appointing now and we are retired. Yeah. So uh, yes, indeed, we we are paying for that uh, liability uh, on a monthly basis, and uh, at year end we we have to uh, cost that liability. Uh, if, for example, the song were to close down, uh, what 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 amount would we be owing in paying those employees uh, that? Uh, that have retired. So it's a, it's a, it's a challenge uh, that and the liability that we have to manage. 
uh, as an entity, and it is it's also being costed and put in our financial statements uh, for purposes of, of reporting. I think those were some of the questions that I could pick up uh, relating to finance and infrastructure uh, that I needed to respond to. Thank you, Chair, and the CEO of over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think there's one or two that you might have missed, but um, I would remind you of those. Um, on to Honorable Van Dates, in terms of the number of council meetings in the, um, the annual report, part they are each council member has got each committee has got four standing meetings um, that are planned annually. Council then has um, one or two additional meetings in preparation of the financial statements, as well as the audit and risk committee. Uh, one of the additional meetings or for both council and audit and risk committee related to the financial sustainability uh, slash turnaround strategy that was the focus of discussion um, and, and, and priority for council at, at that particular time. So that would have been added to that tally of, uh, of council meetings. Um, all of those meetings were were within the council budget as, as prepared for and approved by, by council. Um, I would also maybe like to, to link the issue of risk management, um, that there is no risk management plan. There is a risk management plan, both at council sort of strategic level, as well as operational risks. And um, by way of example, management reports on progress against the mitigation plan at uh, both MANCO as well as a management committee, which is the risk management committee, we track uh, progress on mitigating actions and then report into the audit and risk committee and report to, which then reports to council on progress with regards to, to risk mitigation. I think it was a similar question that um, uh, that is from a race, if I'm not mistaken. With regards to researchers, how do we attract them? We're fortunate in that um, most of our researchers have been with organization um, uh, for, for some time. So the, we've got a very low attrition rate in terms of, of departure of staff for non-retirement non reasons. Um, as well, we have a very good relationship with academic institutions, as I indicated, which then also present the organization with a, a pipeline for future recruitment. We have in the past also received funding from the National Research Foundation, for example, for postgraduate students to, to work at um, one of our museums. And that also forms part of, of our uh, broader sector responsibility. The, um, so I think it's a, it's a, it's a multi-pronged approach to how we, we attract and, and retain researchers. But we, we, for those positions that are currently vacant, particularly for, for curators, we, all, we stress the, the, one of the key performance areas for, for curators is, is around research. So it's important that when we do recruit, there is a demonstration of that incumbent's ability then to fulfill the organization's responsibility to being um, a thought leader. With regards to to Ying, when members would recall when we were here in March, if I'm not mistaken, March 2020, we indicated some of those challenges and sources are also reflected on those today. Um, because now we've got a, a site manager responsible for, for Tsuaying, we still continue to manage the relationships, particularly with one of the uh, business forums that was the, the subject of the complaint that was raised with the public protector. Uh, we have had a series as well of consultations that were led by the Ritkat police station and how to, how to proper, properly manage and bring the parties um, to, 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 some, to some form of agreement or conclusion. Um, I must indicate to members that the, the, the one of the challenges that we do have with the business forum particularly, and this was what council had also escalated to the minister, is that there's an expectation that any and every work that Dizong requires to happen at Swaying specifically, they will be appointed. Whether, and they're not interested in appointment via procurement process, 
They want to be told when adverts are coming out. They want to be told when side visits are happening. They want to be told when people are being employed and we have to work through their people. They want to be told, they, they literally want to be the one-stop shop for everything that is related to swaying. And in the engagements that we've had with them, we said it is, we would then be non-compliant with procurement processes and the issue of equity. It cannot be said that we are now choosing or preferring a in the community, which is not in keeping up with the, 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 the triple P F F A. But the, the engagements that we've had with them, we, we then also worked with one of the um, uh, security companies to say, okay, because there are members in the communities who are um, zero registered security firms, can a portion of, of the requirements for the security officials come from the group? So we agreed on that, they agreed on that. Um, so it, it's, a, it's an ongoing management um, uh, issue that we, we manage. The, the, the fencing does still create a huge problem around access, poaching, um, uh, grazing. Uh, we worried about the, the implication of, of crossbreeding from a grazing perspective. And the department is aware of the challenge with regards to the fence at Tsuaying. We've had several meetings with the DG and with the infrastructure unit and the heritage sector unit about the need for a, a solution, a fencing solution and the concomitant resources in order for us to, to safely in order for council to, to safely um, fulfill their responsibility specifically specifically to that site. So the minister council did take the opportunity as well to brief the minister specifically around issues issues of, of Sayin. So for example, when, when, when the city does a cleaning campaign, uh, you know, we would be accused of not involving the the the, the business forum and say, but if the city and DPW through various programs that they have identified sites, for example, cleaning where there's illegal dumping. We welcome that, but it's not a, pro a project that, that we are managing. So we've also taken to as far as is practical, informing various other partners and players about, can we also find an extension to work to include the, the business forum? But as was also had, had, had articulated in the presentation that we, we did, um, approved, council did approve a community engagement uh, framework. And the main reason why that framework was, the genesis of that framework was on how to better manage the expectations of communities where our museums are located. But also realizing that from a museum practice point, our museums are located in communities and there has to be a, a synergistic relationship between the organization and the community so that communities become vested ambassadors of the well-being of these spaces. So that community engagement forum had sought to then appoint a community engagement officer who would literally be uh, the, 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 the feet on the ground when it comes to engagement processes with, with communities. Uh, that was one of, and that was one of the, the the projects or the programs that we had to defer when when there were budget cuts and when we realized that uh, for the for the immediate period we would not be able to to implement that that particular program. Um, that was on on Tsuaying. William Prince Lu, with regards to to farming. So, for example, uh, we've got very good relationships with farming communities um, and farming groupings in and around in and around William Prince Lu. Um, and as at um, the recent conversations that we've had been having about implementing or diversifying our product and our programs and our services, we engaged, we one engaged with Department of Public Works and Infrastructure around possibly helping us to do um, a, a peach orchard. William Prince used to have a peach orchard. They've indicated interest and a willingness to support that from tilling the land and the seeds and making sure that, that we, we can achieve that. So that's a project that uh, we've already initiated with the Department of, of Public Works and Infrastructure. With um, some of the other farming communities around the area, we've identified um, um, plants, uh, you know, plants that, that can be found that are suitable for that. So for example, maize and soya, um, and it's just really structuring the partnership in a way that it, it becomes a, a rental agreement as per se, as opposed to us 
having invested, uh, uh, investing money into managing a farm. We don't have that kind of money. We don't have the, the capacity or the resource or the know-how to actually become, become farmers. But we're looking at how do we then optimize the partnerships of co farming communities who are productive in and around that space to, to help us achieve, achieve that. Um, so the, 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 the um, I think CFO probably did address the issue yeah. of infrastructure projects. The, the, the slide that I had projected with regards to uh, capital expenditure, expenditure requirements was more is is indicative. It's a preliminary pre preliminary estimate of what it would cost for us to to actually do the kind of projects that we that we seek to do. Some of it is is based on actual projects implemented, and some of it has been based on um, uh, guesstimates and estimates, which will then be once approved. The department, we do submit business plans to the department that are based on preliminary factors, but once the department approves the, the actual project, we then go into, into detailed costing against the budget and working with the, with the project manager, at least it gives us a much more comprehensive position uh, from a business plan point to submit to the department and, and, and receive um, and receive funds for them. So some of it, yes, is, is historical um, information, it's historical expenditure. Some of it is based on, on what we anticipate would be, would be estimates. Um, turnaround strategy, maybe I can, I can respond to Honorable Zondi's question about the delays in the turnaround strategy or implementation of the turnaround strategy. So when we, when we uh, council approved the turnaround strategy in January 2020, we had indicated to, to council a series of projects. So there was a category that was lifestyle related. Um, when, when we talk about lifestyle related activities, we wanted to tap into the market where where there's a gin and wine festival, a, a beer festival, a whatever festival, you know, tap into that market to, to promote and to market its own or any one of our facilities as being um, ideal to host such events. That was the one. Then there were also um, recreational related activities such as, for example, quad biking. We identified that Swaying lends itself well because of the, the we currently have a seven kilometer hiking trail, but in order to have a quad bike trail, we needed one to have funds to actually do the trail. So it's not just a case of here's a quad bike, go figure out the trail. No, we need to have uh, people who are actually specialists in this sort of recreational activities who would help us to actually mark the trail and to clear the trail, that was one. Over and above that, we actually needed to purchase the quad bikes. So we went out and did a preliminary um, assessment of, of what secondhand quad, second quad bikes would cost. And we got, we got figures around that. And in order for us to actually implement a project, we probably need as a start 10 objects. We also wanted to focus on, on kiddies related activities. So for example, petting zoos, uh, where, you know, if you have a kiddies party, you can have a petting zoo, where you've got donkeys and, and ponies and children are able to have a, a wonderful experience. So those are some of the, 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 the activities or the, the projects that we have costed that required investment. We did count through council that approved a budget for the turnaround strategy projects to implement. When we ran into the liquidity challenges, and in, in summary, those challenges were, we did not have, because we weren't, raising sufficient revenue because of limited uh, participation and, and regulations and restrictions. We weren't seeing the same number of uh, visitations, visitors. So we weren't raising as, as enough money from, from those activities to be able to then feed into those particular projects. So we did run into cash flow challenges at the end of the first quarter and therefore that necessitated us stopping the implementation of certain projects because we needed to worry about um, obligation to staff job creditors primarily before we could then take on additional projects that required additional additional sorry funds. cfo sorry cfo to uh, cut you short how far are you with your responses they uh, might be for us 
I'm winding down to the Honorable Zondi and Honorable Mkhamo's comments or questions. And I should maybe five minutes, Chair. Thank you, proceed. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, there was a question, Honorable Zondi, that you asked about how does underfunding in utilities result in, in no visitors to, to museums? Um, there, there, is no, there is no correlation, and that's not what we were um, presupposing in relation to the utilities. So utilities, are the allocation that we get from the department is in the region of five million, I think, for this current financial year. When you look at what the actual costs for all the sites, it's in the region of about 16 million rand. So we were saying to the department, and part of our point going forward, the long-term strategy, is that there needs to be a solution to help us better manage. And that solution needs to be internally driven, but also with the support from the department. Hence, the, the, the my point about retrofitting, greening, uh, things like um, uh, automatic on and off switch, solar energy, et cetera, to help reduce that cost. So there's no correlation. However, there probably is a correlation when, when you face the possibility of your lights being turned off because you're not able to meet the obligation to pay utilities to the city of Swanee or the city of Johannesburg. So if the lights do go off, yes, we will not. We will have to temporarily close the museums. But we, we, we've managed to a great extent to engage with the city of Swanee. Safe or did indicate that we had a um, an agreement with them to pay the balance that is outstanding. But also we have um, queried queried our bills with installed meters on on some of the um, on all of our sites to make sure that there is is correct billing. Um, the meters are read correctly, and so those are the, some of the, the interventions that that we've put in place. Um, I'm just sorry to just quickly make sure that there's nothing I'm missing. The stability of the organization from a financial sustainability point, um, can this be done without support from the department? Y yes and no. Yes and no, honorable member. Yes, we, we want to make sure that we are generating own revenue to the extent that it can, uh, it will not be in the region of, of the 90 million that we get from the department as, of, as, as the annual um, allocation. But if we are if we are achieving a 20 million from own revenue, it, it does assist us to implement projects and to achieve the programs that, that we want to achieve. So there's no clear cut answer as to whether we can do it ourselves. I, I, I don't think we can do it. It will still require ongoing support from government, but we extremely we are acutely mindful of the challenges that uh, and the strain that the fiscus is under, and therefore we have to be creative and innovative to implement solutions that will assist us to, to mitigate that, that, that risk that we know is a, is a real risk. Hence, the turnaround strategy that was approved in order for us to, to think long-term about how do we then um, help to underwrite the running of the, of the, of the organization. Um, Chair, I think the department can respond to the issue of, of leadership um, and, the, and the term that's coming to an end. Um, the, okay, see if I was responding to the consultation issue, the satellite, of the satellite, the satellites. Um, I think for, for future engagements, Honorable Mkhamo, we will, we will give detail on that. We do, we do know what that detail is. Uh, we haven't included in, in this presentation, but for, for future um, engagement with the committee, we'll, we'll give detail on the performance of, of each and every single um, site. Um, what hampers service delivery? At, at, at the moment, there, there aren't any um, other than financial financial impediments to service delivery, there isn't any other material non-financial point. From a, speaking from a non-financial aspect, there aren't any other issues that I could say are an impediment to service delivery. As I indicated, um, over the years, we have, for example, increased um, uh, research paper outputs. We have um, we decrease visitor numbers because of of of, uh, of COVID. We have increased um, management of the heritage objects in terms of impairments, in terms of conservation as per the conservation plan. So there are non non financial. There aren't any non financial um, indicators that would that would impede service delivery. Um, what is diversity versus transformation? 
So from from the um, and I'm just sort of on the side having a look at the employment equity report that we that we um, re submitted uh, in January. Yes, we are largely um, African, and there is a, a a good enough split between African male and female. I think that should be fifty percent. Yes, we are underrepresented when it comes to um, Indian and coloured. But there is um, good diversity by way of representation from uh, from from the white race group. Um, that the transformation for us, if members would recall, um, in March when we were in Parliament, we indicated that we have a transformation framework and a transformation strategy, and the pillars of that transformation strategy are are five. One, we want to work with young people. Two, we want to ensure that the way in which we collect heritage objects, the way that we accept and accession heritage objects is representative of, of society. So we know that museums predominantly have been white, male, um, led, and therefore the collection practices historically were oriented towards Western European cultures. So transformation for us says that we are changing the way that we collect objects so that as an organization, we can balance the narrative and balance the representation that is in 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 our collection um, in our collections. We also said we want to transform the way that we present research. So research cannot just be individual driven. So we have set a, a research agenda that says uh, through a research committee that we established, we want research that again is reflective, responsible, responsive as well to the needs of society. And it's not just uh, um, linear in the way that it's just based on a, um, a heritage object. How do we extend that that um, the, the the narrative beyond just that object? And just by way of example, we are looking at there's a big debate nationally and internationally about um, retribution, redistribution of heritage objects. And we know that in some instances, uh, objects that were acquired in 1892 when Natural History Museum was opened can can stand can can be questioned so we are already internally saying from a transformation point how do we ensure that those historical practices do not carry forward this is an opportunity for us to to literally interrogate some of those assumptions that we've made about the objects that we've collected over the years and to change the, the trajectory going forward on what those practices need to be. Those practices need to be ethical. Those practices need to be responsible. Those practices need to be accountable. So we have to account to society why we made certain decisions about the objects that, that we, that we um, acquired. Um, my, my chairperson, can I maybe defer the question about the, the ARIC independent chairperson uh, to you? Yes, we do have a, a website that is um, a central website, and in that central website, you can then access the satellites and all activities that are related to the satellites. Um, so that is a website that we currently have. CFO has responded to post-medical uh, benefits and professional levels percentage. We, we Speaking at the top of my head without having the, the figures uh, in front of me currently, we are, I'd say, 75% uh, capacitated in terms of the professional positions that, that uh, are on, on, the, on the approved organogram. So that, that does mean that um, we're able then to meet our service delivery objectives and to meet the mandate, which is around, around the core business. Um, I will pause there, Chairperson. I think I've we've covered the questions. If there aren't any, members could, could redirect us accordingly. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, CEO. Um, before I give over to the members to check if they are satisfied with the questions uh, from the side of the department, is there anything, um, Honorable Mpise, if you wanted to come in? No, uh, thank you very much, Honorable uh, Chairperson. Um, maybe I can just indicate one that uh, in relation to the staff, uh, the question about um, the, the, the staff and the salaries and uh, what is going to happen uh, with the 
find, with the skills that they require, uh, if I may summarize that, it's just to indicate that Chairperson, one of the supports that we have looked at and we have got approval by Treasury was that uh, all the people who have been offering bursaries should be able to get employment opportunities. And the uh, once uh, the, that has been now approved, uh, that uh, for next year we can place about 15 graduates uh, in museums. Uh, who will then be able to somehow complement the staff shortages in the museums uh, for a period of two years, uh, that placement. And Treasury approved that um, we have that two million rent from uh, uh, the Bazaar scheme that we have to just use and create job opportunities and assist museums uh, in that regard. And that will be starting as of the 1st of April after the Treasury had approved that. Now, on the issue of uh, sustainability and viability or growth of the entity, we agree with the strategy they have come up with in relation to, first and foremost, creating an enabling environment to have more visitors and, and create own generated funding. Because if they are able to create revenue uh, with the shrinking budget and uh, offer of government, that will make these entities more financially sustainable. And it's a culture we need to change through a lot of marketing from within first the local visitors to the museums, make the museums the first choice of visit by our own uh, uh, South African audiences. Uh, so at this stage, the problem is that uh, there is a very little appreciation by citizens about the value and the reasons for visiting museums. So we are saying that uh, for viability purposes, let us create an environment and work quite hard to make sure that uh, in the minds of South Africans, they know that they go and, go and visit museums and that that should be able eventually to come at a cost. All the countries that survive through cultural tourism they are in fact having visitors paying when they go to museums. Uh, in South Africa, because of the lack uh, of that appreciation based on our historical situation, and um, we, we have people who would rather go to a soccer match or go to rugby and pay lots of money for rugby or cricket, but they will rather not pay or go to the museum. So it is work that we need to do, but we have also engage with tourism at this stage. We are working on finalizing the MOU with the Department of Tourism to help us increase the issue of tourists uh, to our museums. And we believe if we do so, uh, then the generation of revenue will assist the museums in this regard. Now on the issue around the transformation vis-a-vis -vis diversity, I think um, Transformation is a, is a deliberate intervention to ensure that the distortions of the past imbalances, uh, whether it is on gender or racial uh, exclusion, uh, that, that is what they, they are working on as an institution. And the, the fact that they are at least at 50-50 with gender-based, uh, then the issue of racial inclusion, uh, so that there is also then a diverse and um, uh, staff or skills with staffing in the entity and all other entities is uh, something that uh, becomes then crucial. You can't achieve uh, diversity and manage diversity where you've got a monocultural um, institution. And that is why it is starting with ensuring that there is first and foremost transformation in the composition of staff and council and will lead us then to an issue of multicultural institution and, and uh, there will be no exclusion uh, of the other racial groups. Then we're managing diversity there, but at least the staff first is more is multicultural staff and is multiracial staff that you have. So Jefferson, I think um, in a nutshell for now, those are the questions I thought were critical. The rest have been answered. On the issue of the staff uh, of the um, committee meetings, we understood the increase because uh, if you look at the challenges they were facing, 
they did need to look at their financial situation and that required more engagements uh, as, a, as a board uh, to ensure that they come up with a strategy to address those challenges. We noted the increase in, from that angle, uh, but there were, because most of them were also supported by virtual meetings, it was then clear that uh, there were some savings uh, when people are not coming physically to a meeting. But um, we were just raising it because it was something we noted had an increment, but it was based on the rationale that they were dealing with a crisis situation. Chairperson, at this stage, I think uh, without wasting time of the committee, I will end there at this stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh uh, DG, uh, just one thing from my side to detail on the socioeconomic uh, transformation. I just wanted to let them hear about that. Please let make it very fashionable through media links for our learners and communities to be aware of what you are offering in the museum. The heritage of our communities must never be taken for granted. I'm very impressed with the challenges and the, the bullets, uh, six bullets being attended to. Please give attention to the planned projects that will be delayed. We will also love to do oversight visits on our museums. Thank you very much. Uh, members, there was answers given, given to the questions. Um, if you want to, to, to raise some questions, we don't have much time, but I saw the hand of Honorable Moslongo. Comrade Dennis. It's the only two hands that I, that I saw. So it's, a, it's a, a second bite. Thank you, uh, Honorable Maslongo. You can go. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Chair, I wanted to raise issues of uh, that the DG wants us to discuss this. My comment was, when you discuss transformation, you must, trans you must even include diversity. But nonetheless, I, I want, if the minister was here, I was going to, you know, we mustn't lie to ourselves to say the museum is it's transformed will be lying to ourselves when you discuss that. But nonetheless, my follow-up question, Chair, which was maybe I'm not satisfied with the response. I've put it on the chat. What is the website? I don't have the actual website. So then can give me the actual website that they have or different website if they have. Because my understanding is they can have one website that will link to all these satellites. Another question that I've asked, which I think I need to, to be given the actual, why do we have so much money allocated for consultation, consultants, sorry, consultants? Can I get a reason? What is the reason for us? We have more staff members, but we have consultants beside. Or can they tell me the amount allocated on, on it's, I think it was four to five million somewhere there. Uh, it's allocated for consultant. What was the reason for what company and what were the expertise that they don't have? I think those two comments, which is I wanted to, to get it. Thank you, Chair, for now. Thank and you, Honorable. I can see that. Uh, I'm confident. Thanks. Honorable Ms. Longo and Honorable Dennis. Thank you, Chair, for the um, second opportunity. Just a few comments. I want to thank the department for, for that uh, financial support, but I would like the department to strictly monitor the cash flow. It is, a, uh, you know, going into a new financial year uh, with a shortfall is, is not a good start. But I hope the department will, will just assist the, the entity. And then there's a variety of activities um, uh, in under the Song Museum. Uh, but I heard about quad, quad bikes and farms and markets and all that. And I think uh, many museums or entities should look at public-private partnerships where those business forums have been transformed, uh, you know, inclusive. Uh, I think because they must focus on the core business and let other people who know how to run 
that part of the of of their businesses that supporting their core business uh, for income uh, let that people run it uh, as long as they get the money in that they project for the for themselves and don't have to go spend a lot of money on quad bikes quad bikes you must fix and as repairs and injuries and whatever goes with it it's quite a big thing uh, uh, so so i support the concept but public private partnerships is very low i think on on our agendas and maybe the museum must look uh, at at the province the respective provinces and uh and and and, and get that agencies that works with these um, businesses to come and to come and support them on on the end goal and then um this is the last point a chairperson not paying the bills or the service providers on time is not good governance so so i heard uh, responses you know where they they haven't done that and uh, we, we need to make sure that as an entity was government that we lead by example we have to pay accounts and pay our bills because it's not just about the entity and the government it's about us as individuals working in the organization the culture the values and what we transfer to the next generation because if we go on like this we have this pressure where lots of lights been cut off and services been disconnected this is it's not necessary they can go in and make arrangements and the respective authorities must understand if you can't pay and make arrangements but it's not good if we just ignore uh, or, or choose them as a priority if we can't pay all the bills and then the last point chapters in the exhibitions which i've heard in the presentation is, is important but some uh, museums have been come from the old previous south africa and been donated to the government and our government said with this history of what happened before uh, our democracy and the point i want to make is that the exhibitions and i've seen it here where i am in a western cape um, these exhibitions must also be used to um, to display transformation and how history has changed over time while history can't be typics out and we need to reflect what has happened whether it was good or bad every day whatever happens today is history tomorrow and the good things that has happened uh, in transforming our country must also come through exhibitions uh, in in a museum somewhere we 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 seen that in Otsuren museum now um, where the Khoisan is, is is there which was never there before because they've lived in that in their caves and it was never reflected in the in the in the in the history or when people visited that museums in the in the past before before 1994 so it's just um, a few um is a proposal i think that can help the entity and i think we are all in the same in the same reason here for to let the museums function optimally and let the management do they work and they have the right, the right people there and we want the best for south africa and for our country thank you chairperson thank you very much honorable dennis joseph uh if there is any response on the website site requested from um, honorable ms longo the website is um on the chat but it's www.ditsong.org.za and if if there is any other uh, uh responses can we quickly deal with that thank you Jessie will respond to the question regarding I see um Anon Khan has also put it on the chat the um consultants Sefa Sorry I was uh, muted uh in terms of the detail uh, for the consultants uh the so the services that we have outsourced Uh, which cannot be done internally uh is so there's a vovuzela hot, hot, hotline uh which uh, um members of the public uh, can report fraud and other irregularities there's a payroll service uh foundation professional development is a company that we appointed uh to to do our payroll services and uh, that can also not be done internally there is a uh, NBC Holdings uh, which we appointed uh, to do wellness services with regards to uh, employee relations issues uh, we do valuation of the post retirement liability uh, for audit purposes when we preparing our financial statements 
Uh, so we also appoint a, a service provider in that regard. Uh, every year we have to provide a triple B certificate. And uh, so the requirement from the triple B commission is that when we do the audit, we need to submit uh, that certificate every year. And we have to conduct that, that, uh, that exercise every year. And uh, we appoint a service provider for that. For heritage assets, there is a database, a, a register, uh, an online database that we we have and that is also a managed by grant Thornton advisory services uh, who sorry, conducted the sorry to interrupt you honorable Moslongo. i see you again is there anything that you want to raise honorable yeah, let, him, let him finish i'll raise it after i'm raising it okay after. thank you let, let, let him finish Continue, CFO. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. And uh, lastly, uh, we also do um, valuation of heritage assets for impairment, uh, for additions. Uh, it's, a, it's an audit requirement, and that has to be done by an expert, uh, valuable for heritage assets. And there's an accounting service, uh, an accounting system uh, called Lodge, uh, which we use for reporting purposes and also for management accounting functions. Uh, so there is lodge that we appointed uh, to conduct that particular okay. service. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Chair. Thank you, CFO. Honorable Ms. Longo. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I, you know, I question why I was asking this. They cannot have an HR department, but they outsource HR issues. Wellness is HR issues. Why do you outsource it? Why do you outsource payroll? I think it's one of the things that you must make sure that you have it internally. And that, that's my input on that. You cannot outsource basic things for HR. Payroll and your wellness service. Right now, the, the department has outsourced 14.9 14 million for artists. Why it mustn't be internal? I'm just saying, same thing like this. It must be internal. Chair, the issues of chair, chairperson, in, independent chair. I wanted to find out what is the role of that independent chairperson and then where, where does it come or is it the only entity? Maybe the DG will ask. First time hearing of an independent chairperson in this entity. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Ms. Longo. Is there any response, uh, DG, from your side? I wanted to close the, the chapter now. No, no, Chairperson, I just want to say that um, the, the issue of transformation, uh, as Honorable Ms. Longo have raised, uh, because we accept that it's a process uh, rather than an event, uh, and that is why there um, has been a, a work done in this area. And uh, we do agree that um, it has to go together with um, a diversity uh, management uh, and uh, that it, the broader scope of transformation does not just talk to the staff. It talks to the heritage assets, the content, the narrative, the audiences, uh, all these things contribute to our transformation and the work has been done, continues to be done and uh, to reverse uh, what has been the reflection of museums and the depiction of the majority of South Africans uh, with these museums uh, has always been uh, in a negative light more than in a positive light. And therefore then when the visitor experience uh, is being changed, it means even the content of the museums has to reflect who we are as South Africans. And that is a process rather than uh, mainly an event that we can say today, we have transformed the full, fully the museums. And we would like to work with South Africans as we continue to deal with the, all these elements that needs to reflect our South Africanness and identity in the museums. And that means then that we have to work together with museums uh, in ensuring that there is a, that there is a continuous process to change what is the content in the museum, but also the narrative when people visit there, what does it reflect and say about us as South Africans? Because the museums that we have, most of those things were like they say, 
uh, being used to only reflect the projections of Africans and the, uh, and the blacks in general as, as, as minority or as non-humans. Uh, uh, and therefore then what we are dealing with on transformation is a bigger issue that our museums must reflect that common identity that we have. So we are saying it is a challenge, but it is something that we are definitely working on. And uh, yet uh, that is then a journey that we must work uh, towards achieving at the end of the day. I don't think Chaperson, uh, there is much we can now add on this matter. Um, but uh, just to say that uh, from our side, we will continue to then work towards supporting the, the museum uh, in the challenges they are facing. Uh, and we understand what uh, Honorable Dennis had raised uh, around the issue of the carryover of debt. And that is why we think that they will continue working uh, on their uh, transformation agenda uh, when it comes to the uh, issue of how to deal with the challenges they are facing going into the new financial year. And then we will then uh, uh, engage the entity in that regard as we have done with the immediate crisis that they were facing uh, about payment of salaries and all those things. So we will work with them to make sure that the entity um, is given the support it can within the means available at this stage. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, DG. I will not allow anyone now further on this matter. The matter is closed, questions was asked, and responses was there. If you are not satisfied with any other questions, you can uh, write to this, through the secretary your questions to detone. I thank you very much. Point of exigency, uh, Chair. Point of exigency. Point of exigency, Chair. Chair, I've Honorable asked this Trauma. question, I've asked this question three times, and no one responded. What is independent chairperson? What is his role for independent chairperson? No one responded. I've asked this question again. Why do they have cons a consultation fee for internal things for HR duties? No one responded. I think it must be answered. I don't need any written answer. Uh, CFO, is there any, or CEO, are there any response? That will be the last one. I don't want to allow anyone for questions now. I closed question session now. Uh, the, the, the question raised by Honorable Maslongo, is there any response? Chair, through you, I will, I will um, respond to the question around particularly HR-related services and um, Dr. Maslongo's um, position about the wellness particularly. And then my chairperson's hand is also up. Um, she can respond to the independent chairperson or doctor. Um, so let, let me let me highlight what, what is entailed in the wellness program that is on office. So we have um, the, the, the company that we appointed provides counseling services that, that can't be done by HR persons. We also provide uh, grief counseling, whatever, array, the whole array of uh, counseling services is done by the outsourced services who have got on their books um, uh, registered, trained psychologists, psychiatrists. The line is available not only to the zone members, but also by extension to their family members. And the thing that we have noticed and picked up on over, over the years of providing the service is that uh, as a society, we are dealing with um, mental issues. So there is an, an avenue and a platform that is availed to staff members. So that the, the productivity of staff members is, is directly linked to their mental health and well-being. And we as an organization deem that as, as important and as significant, and it cannot be, be done in-house. We don't have the capacity or the skills to offer counseling services to member of staff. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, uh, CF CEO. Uh, Chairperson, sorry for not acknowledging you. You can take your bite Thank you, and close the matter. All right. Thank you, Thank you Chairperson. Dr. Mshongo, uh, my hand was actually raised to respond to your audit committee chair. I had lowered it when the chair was uh, 
Good. Um, uh, certainly, the phenomena of having an independent, non-executive chairperson of an audit committee is nothing that is peculiar to the zone. It's a practice uh, that uh, is quite common, even amongst a lot of the entities within the, the, the sector as well. That is, in terms of good governance, we are normally advised to strengthen independence and to strengthen governance that you have a totally independent chair specifically of the audit committee. And in our case, as the Zoom, I think as board, we can definitely attest that having that independent chairperson has certainly assisted us to get to where, where we are, where we are actually able to even claim um, two consecutive uh, clean, clean audits. So it is not an issue that is peculiar to, to the Zoom. I'm hoping that answers the question. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, um, uh, Chairperson. Let me take the opportunity. Thank you, members, for your questions and thanks, um, uh, Ditong, for your response. Let me take the opportunity to 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 thank um, the entity for the for their presentation today. Thanks for 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 highlighting the issue of this month uh, on Heritage, um, Human Rights Month. Uh, thanks that you also alert to us what is your, your, your objectives regarding our community there, there outside. I now declare the session of you presenting your presentation uh, closed and thanks for your attendance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Our next point on the agenda, if you, you can, we can release you now, management of the tongue. Can you hear me? Can we proceed? No, thank you very much, Chairperson. It's a wonderful weekend. Uh, Chairperson, I was worried that uh, honorable members are not wearing their netball uh, World Cup uh, uh, Friday t-shirts, and uh, uh, I am lodging a complaint uh, over uh, Chairperson. I see my one, uh, DG. Oh, sorry, my one uh, sorry, DG. <laughs> Give me the opportunity to explain that, DG. I saw when you, when your picture was uh, on the screen that you look very beautiful today in your bright colors. So those of us who received the t-shirts, it's too small, and we can't extend oh. them. If we Mine can have another small. round like yours. <laughs> we will really appreciate it with the caps. You look very beautiful. Then we will uh, also wear our t-shirts on Fridays. Thank you. I, I support it. I'm still waiting for my extra large as well. I'm waiting for my extra large. So like, huh? Okay, we will catch them. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, uh, DJ. Um, members, we are now on... Point, what is the last point on the agenda? And it's regarding, let me check, regarding the letter that was forwarded to the chairperson. It was then in the last meeting, uh, this, uh, 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 a decision was taken that that letter must be sent to the members of the of the committee. So I can um, report that I received mine, and so I I, I, I wish that all of us did receive uh, the letter. Can we confirm, members? Yes, chair. Thank you very much. We are on that uh, letter. If I can um, ask Honorable Muslongo, the letter was from your office. Let me see, yes, Honorable Muslongo. If you can just read the letter to us, we, 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 we did receive it, we read it, but if you can come in on that letter. Thank you. 
Thanks, Chairperson. Chairperson, it's a norm of, uh, in fact, maybe it's only me in this committee. When there's an issue that I think it's, it's issues of a debate of more importance, I'll write to the Chairperson and will ask the Chairperson for the first time that seeing the Chairperson put this item on the agenda. I've, write, I've written several emails to the Chairperson to ask the, the Minister for him to come and account. There's plus minus 4.9 million which are located as a tender to a company, and I think you've received the name of the company, for wellness for artists. I wanted to find out, I've written several questions to the minister, even my colleague, uh, Honorable Van Dijk, wrote different questions. We wanted to find out to date how many artists have benefited and this amount of money equivalent to what artists didn't get. Now the minister must come and account because people, are, our artists are dying, they're killing themselves based on depression of wellness issues, especially under this COVID-19, which is uh, it's a cause. But now one of the things that I wanted for the minister to come and the department to brief us on this 14.9 million, which was allocated to that company, how much has been spent to date and then how many artists have benefited? Those are the questions that I wanted to engage with the minister. Now, I think it's a matter of importance. Our artists are killing themselves. I think, you know, depression is there. I can name artists who are saying they did not, they're not even aware of this company that is assisting these artists. Now, that is the only rationale above that because I can, you can go to the question that I've written formally. There's no engagement. Is that question, there's no formal question. I think you can see even today, I've asked this question of a, a chairperson's independent chair. They did not respond. He'll just move away from that. When the minister is here, we engage, we'll ask for a uh, follow-up question, and then we come up with a solution. Because one of the things that I see, for an example, I've spoken to several artists. They're not aware of this company. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Muslongo. Uh, honorable members, there is the explanation of that uh, letter was raised, uh, sent to the chairperson and also sent uh, to us as members. If any one of you wanted to, to elaborate on the letter, um, you have the chance now. Thank you. Members? Um, honorable Chair. Honorable Chair. Yes, Honorable Mamubule, uh, Honorable Zongi. Can I check if uh, Honorable Mutongo only needs the, the answers from the minister or can the department maybe also answer on, the, on behalf of the minister or maybe get the minister maybe to prepare an answer. I don't know, uh, I've got three options. Which one makes you happy, uh, Sepo? Honorable Zondi? Yes, Chair. Um, Chair, I, if, if this is a complaint, Chair, I wish to know who complained and why did he complain to Honorable Mshonga and not to the minister? If the minister uh, know the complaint, surely the DG also know uh, about the complaint. But if we are discussing a, a letter that does not have an author, so how do we trace it back? Because he talks about millions. And obviously, I agree with Honorable Mshongo that uh, accountability is the key. But who is the complainant? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Zondi. Honorable Malumane. And then Thank Honorable you. Dennis. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I just wanted to find out because, yes, I did see the letter, but the letter doesn't have information. But now I can see that Honorable Mishongo just wanted a clarity to say when he was doing his own oversight, he has found out that there is a company that is dealing with wellness that has been contracted for three years in the department to do wellness in the athletes or in the artists. 
So I just wanted to find out because what Honorable Nklongo is presenting is that he just wants the minister to come and account on the issue that he did ask the artists. They are saying they don't know that there is this thing. But in my view, what I knew is that I think it was early this year there was this launch that was live in the departmental Facebook. And if you can go to the departmental website, still the, the launch, it was launched. I think it was on January or February, if my memory serves me well, between January and February. But what I wanted to ask, I don't know, maybe what, this is going to be a dialogue, is to Mr. Mshango to say, after hearing this, instead of asking or writing to the minister, to say, I'm just requesting this information to say there is this thing. What has happened? Did he ever write to the office of the minister or speak to the DG about this issue so that maybe if he's not satisfied about the responses, that's when maybe I can dwell much after maybe I've got the response. But to me, Chair, I don't see it as an item that we can put it as a single item to discuss it as a committee. Because each and every time the department come to present to us their annual report, I think even this amount, this kind of contract or the project is part of their report. It, it can be part of their report. Maybe some of us, we never knew maybe the way Honorable Mshongo are calling a corner, but what we've seen is a good thing to some of us, because we know when it, we speak about issues of depression, some other times you need really, really professional. Some other times you need to speak to an outside person, that a person that you know within. I think maybe, if maybe he can respond to that. I Mina, mean, I think it was, a, it was a good initiative from the department to do that for the well being of the artists and the other staff. Maybe the main challenge here is that the artist F as he's saying that they are not aware of this of this wellness program that maybe how does the department make sure that it goes to the to the artist that they know this because I know that you are dealing with different kinds of artists and it's it's true that honorable Michel what is saying that artists are dying outside there there are challenges that we're facing, we see each and every day that is happening. But what I can see maybe is the popularization of it. That is the challenge to say they don't have information that there is this kind of wellness. That's when Mina, I see that Honorable Mishongo in that in his presentation to say the artists they don't know about this. So I don't think it is an issue that we can put it and discuss it, but we can peruse it under the department when it comes to do a presentation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Malumane. Uh, if I can give the chance to Honorable Joseph and then Mas uh, Honorable Maslongo. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. I have three points to comment on. First of all is uh, the principle of accountability and the principle of transparency. On, on oversight, which I think Member Mishlongo is doing here, uh, and of course the benefits out of that uh, wellness project to artists who is under stress. That's the first point. The second point is obviously uh, the, the department or the relevant entity must report, or the minister in question must report when asked to do so, or deputy minister. So, uh, in, and it is important, I think, given us still in the COVID and the recovery period and plan, and the, and the points highlighted by Member Mshlongo is, is, is important. Uh, we don't know why the question is asked. Um, maybe that's um, it's inc it's not inclusive enough. Everyone doesn't know. Um, and we want to know maybe there is programs, maybe there's no programs, and the department can explain that. Um, so my, my, my third point in terms of a solution is um, that we look at, at our program that is already approved uh, for the term and that we see if we can 
bring this item in for 30 minutes where the minister and the deputy minister and the department obviously is present at every every meeting that we have every committee meeting so um so i don't see that we must have a separate special meeting or a separate separate special agenda but with the approved agenda points going forward i'm sure we can slot in half an hour uh, on for the item and, and and create accountability and transparency on what member Shlongo is asking for. And I think there's no harm in that. That is our job is oversight and keep all entities and and for the money spending uh, uh, department accountable. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable um, Joseph, Honorable Moslongo, and then Honorable Veronica. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, I think, Chair. I think it is shocking to see that members are not aware of the issues. This was presented to us 2020 in August. And this was presented to us a marketing company, which is, has an advertisement uh, things that are doing a wellness. It was presented to us. And it's shocking to see that members, they don't read the items when they're presented to us. It's really shocking to say there's a complaint. It's not a complaint. It's me doing my oversight work. If money allocated, it must be utilized. This is our taxpayers' money. And it's shocking to see that members are thinking, I receive, I have a constituency. Obviously, it's not only mine. Artists, it's our constituency, it's our sector. Right now, artists are suffering because of uh, uh, under stress and uh, depression and other uh, wellness issues that is going throughout this COVID-19 at this season. Now, it was presented in 2020. This is the term that all of you are here have commented. You've been in this parliament. Now, it's. I think I want to cover, I want to leave what Honorable Dennis was saying. It's all about accountability. It's all about transparency. Let's give the minister to prepare, come for 30 minutes, any day. It's not a special one day meeting for this. And it's it's a norm. Cleared came because I wrote the letter. I, I The items that I wrote the letter and then the person did not bring it to you guys. He'll speak to me and then say, no, we'll call them. And then he'll call them. Now, it's shocking to see today that thing, people are thinking, why, why? Complaints must come to me for information, and I can send it to the minister. I'm the member of parliament. I have a constituency to account for. I didn't come under a back door. They're allowed to complain to me, not to the minister. If anyone is allowed to complain to any member. Now, it's shocking to see members that... People are not allowed to complain to me. For information, it's not only about complaints. I've spoken to ordinary artists. They're not aware of this program. Now, it's all about that. The minister must come and account. Diligent work, doing my oversight work. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Oslongo. I also saw that uh, Honorable Van Dijk um, write a message to the chat, but I will allow her now. Honorable Van Dijk. Uh, Chairperson, now I agree with my colleagues, and um, what I said I meant in my uh, right, we are wrote in the chat is just that uh, it should not be a problem for the department to respond on the questions or to give feedback because that's part of our role, oversight role. So, and I agree that um, it is important that we know how this money has been spent. If uh, there is allegations that artists, uh, where artists say that they're not even aware of of this opportunity, where they can go, um, um, and there was questions in the beginning about this uh, allocation to this company, which is an uh, advertising business. So um, I think that's also problematic. Was in the past. So maybe we should be informed on um, where this money has been spent. Thank you, Honorable Van Dijk. I saw the hands of uh, Honorable Zondi and Nalumane, and then I will close. Thank you. No, Chair, thank you very much. I will not withdraw the, 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 my, my, my question on why the complaint was afforded on Arum Shongo because it has something to do with the department and the minister. Why it is a, a, a via uh, to the member, yet the, 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 the author of the complaint, it's a complaint. It's, it's, it's true. End of order, Chair. Yes, what is the order? 
Can we read the, I think you started saying people that don't read English to our mother tongue. Can someone read the, the email? It's not a complaint for anyone. It's a, it's an opportunity for me as a member to ask the minister to come and look account. I think it's clear. Can someone read that email? But I read it. I have a concern. I wrote it as a concern. It says that it's a concern, not as a member. I know this company has been given 14.9 million. Now it shows that members are not aware. The something is shocking. I don't need you to withdraw. I think the order didn't ask anyone to withdraw, whatever that is saying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Comrade Zondi, proceed, please. Yeah, Chair, even if it's a concern, I, 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 I'm still maintaining. Why a concern is not a, 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 a addressed to the minister? Because every artist in South Africa knows who's the minister of sports and culture in South Africa. Why is not a, a, a concern of, 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 of a particular amount and a particular program? Why it is raised to us? Why not raised first to the minister? Then the, when the minister is failing to account, then come back, uh, back to us. That is that is that is my concern. Actually, but I don't have a problem with the 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 the, the proposal uh, uh, from Honourable Joseph that uh, an honourable Malumani uh, that the matter the the, 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 met, the matter can be addressed to the to the minister. Uh, and I'm not opposed to the accountability and transparency. That is why uh, the minister is not um, a, 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 Will be will be able to explain whether the the program uh, 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 was funded and the 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 the, 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 the service provide who is the service pro provide and how the 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 the, 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 the programs uh, unfolded. I don't have a problem with that, but at the end of the day, chair, we don't come with the concern and complaint all the time when the minister is there because we are playing oversight. If the, 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 the minister is here and we have a problem with the artist, that is not getting, get, uh, uh, getting response from the minister. That is where we are going to have a problem. Other than that, Chair, we don't have a problem of, 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 of the accountability. And if the matter was in 2020, the whole 2021, we have an opportunity to ask the question: If the program wasn't was 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 reported in twenty in twenty twenty, and the whole twenty twenty one, when the department uh, uh, reported on the first, second, and third quarter, we never raised the the the, 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 the question. But fast forward to uh, uh, to the concern of a particular uh, uh, artist, if it is a, 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 an, an artist. Why it is not directed to the minister? That is my, 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 my only question, Chair. But I'm not asking uh, from Honorable Mishongo to respond because I agree with honorable members that uh, the question should be directed to the minister because he's alive and the department would respond. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Zondi. The last speaker will be Honorable Amalumane, and then I closed for a proposal on this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. That is why on my presentation, I said I am aware of this matter because it was also launched between January and February 2021. And the matter, it was presented to us. But because some of us, we didn't have questions on the issue of the wellness, the way they are. That's the matter where it is, because it was presented to us in the reports of the department. And then my question was that to Mr. Mishong, because he just want the minister to respond on the issues to say, here in the letter to say that, can I read? I would like to request that we call upon the minister in territory must provide an update to the committee on wellness tender. The tender that Honorable Mshongo is speaking about, the tender that Honorable Mshongo knew, that's why he's writing this letter. And it, continu it continues to say, to confirm whether his department is contracting 
the service of uh, the pronunciation may be not correct. Can you pardon me? Is it ending list advertising and marketing for wellness service for 14.9? That's my question. That is why I was asking Honorable Mshongo to say, did he ever write to the minister as he was doing his constituency work to request relevant information regarding this? And then the minister never responded or what was what was it? The other matter now that I want to speak to correct to to Honorable Mshong is that as he's writing his letter, he's not sure whether it's a contract that the department has contracted with this service provider. But he is also saying it is in our report that will bring contradiction. That is why I said, Nina, it was in the presentations. We did saw this in the presentation. Now it brings con contradiction because he doesn't know whether is it contracted or not. I think maybe Mina, my proposal was that can Honorable Mushong, as he has been doing his oversight, can he request the, the minister? maybe in writing, to respond to this. And then if he fails, he's got the right as an honorable member to bring the matter to the committee. After that, I don't know. But my view that, and I'm not afraid for us to say we must request accountability on this issue. It's part of us. This is what we're here for, for an oversight to make sure that there is value for money. Money that is spent, there must be value under it. We're speaking about what to build. That is why I'm also saying, you are correct, Mr. Mshongo. We can see that there is a challenge outside there regarding the wellness of the artist. I'm also speaking to say, maybe there is an oversight within the department on to say, how did they make sure that each and every artist knew about this uh, service that is rendered by this service provide. I just wanted that to respond to say, can Honorable Rumshong respond to say, did he ever maybe communicate, write a communique to the department or to the minister requesting this kind of information? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Malumane. Comrade, sorry, uh, Honorable Maslongo will be the last speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I've stated here that I've asked formal questions. Another process for accountability to write, write written question to the minister. I've done that. And to date, I'm not sure what is the status of the money. It's what I wanted to find out. I need a report. Now, for me to be asked, did I write to the minister? I think it is clear. I've stated in this meeting that the minister is not responding to our email. It was in this meeting. And the, the, the proposal was let the chairperson guide this. Things must go to the chairperson and then we'll come back. It is militant. Now I'm doing what I'm paid for. The minister must come and account. It's not a special day for this item only. And you are aware, Honorable Malumane, that there was presentation. For information, that presentation, I, it's, I, the question that I've asked today, wanted to find out how many artists benefited. The presentation didn't tell us that. How many out of 14.9 uh, 14 million, 14 .9 million, how much is outstanding? Or how much is a surplus, if there's any? Those are the things that I wanted to find out. Now, for members to think that uh, 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 I went to an oversight, you know, it's an assumption, but you're allowed to assume. I'm doing my oversight work. I read newspapers. I go back to what we've discussed, and I'm asking the minister to come and account as a form of accountability. It seems like members are afraid because it came from me for the minister to come and account. It's a normal, it's a process that we usually do. For information, Cricket South Africa, uh, uh, 2019, when they came, I wrote to the chairperson, and they came. It didn't come here to us to discuss. It's given that there are issues as individual MPs. If you've exhausted processes, I've exhausted formal questions, email, the minister is not responding to my email. It was given to you guys. I've said it. To him, I guess he said no. Let him. I told him that you only acknowledge, you don't respond. Now, for me to be asked those questions, I think let's ask the minister about 14.9 million in the department. 
and even that company maybe must come and tell us the status quo of the report. That is only what I am asking for. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members, on this issue. Uh, there was a proposal on the issue from the side of Honorable Joseph to, to add this matter to the committee program. I think, uh, uh, Honorable Members, not to debate this issue further, let's add it to the program that will be also from my side uh, to add it to the, to the committee program so that the minister and the department can uh, come and account on the issues raised um, through the letter that was sent to us. Can you hear me? I support me, the uh, idea, Shepherd. Come again. I support the idea. Thank you. Yes, we, 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 we hear you. Okay, thank you, members. Honorable uh, uh, um, Jabu, the secretary of, 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 the, of the department, um, please add it to the program of uh, the committee and we will work from there. Thank you. Uh, uh, members, the last point on this agenda is the closing remarks. Thank you very much, uh, members, for today's attention on the on the uh, um, on this uh, uh, date and issues raised by ourselves according to the program. But there is one issue left that I wanted to attend to. Um, if members have looked through our attendance on the platform, there is one member who are in the meeting today. Sorry for uh, my apology for not introducing her uh, at the beginning of the meeting, but it's Honorable um, Harvard, Dr. Harvard. I really wanted to thank you uh, for today's attention um, to the committee's meeting. I hope that she learned a lot. Um, we didn't fight to each other. We just clarify issues amongst us so that we can reach a goal ahead. But uh, you are very welcome in future to attend our meetings. Honorable members. Person, can we see his face on the face? Apology. You are okay, thank you, Honorable Harvard. Can you please show your face requested by Honorable um, Ms. Longa? In our faces. <laughs> Honorable Harvard, are you still on, on, on the platform? And can you see the face, Honorable Ms. Longo? Okay, okay, thank you very much. She's beautiful. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, what's up? We are out of order. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Harvard. Thank you. Honorable members, we come to the end of our mute, uh, meeting. It's Friday, it's still Friday. The weekend already start uh, on Honorable Maslongo from 12 o'clock and we are still in a meeting. But now yeah, the throats are open now, Chairperson. It's Friday, uh, the throats are open. Okay, okay. I, I, I think you have a soccer game ahead this weekend, so enjoy it. All of you <laughs> shop, have, shop. A, have a wonderful weekend. Those Baba, who Baba. are deployed to come to programs of, the, of any departmental work that you have to do, attend to it, enjoy it, and be safe. I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you. Hola, hola. You did very well, Malibong, Chairperson. You did very well. Malibong. Malibong. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, everyone. I'm so happy to meet all of you. Thank you very much, Honorable Harvard. Thank you very much. Uh, I didn't hear, I didn't hear Honorable Dennis say goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm so, goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.